Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto was left alone and trained by his parent part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. It sure is dark in here. A 6 year old Naruto thought briskly as he stared dully out of his bedroom window towards the rest of Kanahagakur no Sato proper. Drumming his fingers on the windowsill, he sighed as his eyes traveled towards to the Namaka's training grounds below, watching his parents Minato Namaka's and Kishina Yuzumaki train his twin sister, Naomi Yuzumaki Namaka's. I wonder if there's anything to eat he thought, getting up from his bed, and made his way to the fridge when the side door burst open, the sound of laughter permeating the estate. Naruto continued to look bored as he rummaged about the fridge when the rest of his family came in. The job Naomi. ULL kicked the other gen in S but in no time. Kashina said ecstatically. Minato smiled and ruffled her orange hair, congratulating her as well. Since your birthday is coming up, I'll teach you one of my signature techniques, the Rasengan. Minato said, watching Naomi's eyes widen in excitement. Really? Too san she started to hop in place, flailing her arms as Minato and Kashina laughed. Naruto rolled his eyes and nabbed a sandwich before closing the fridge. He made his way upstairs until he heard Naomi's voice again, calling out to him. Look Naruto Nai Tusan s teaching me the Rasengan. She smiled a pleasant smile, while Naruto continued to look bored as he stared at her, disinterested. Her smile lessened a bit. Why can't you be more like me, Nai san? Maybe then you ll have some actual friends. She said, mockingly. All she got was another disinterested stare, which made her shiver a bit. His cold blue eyes stared deep into her own, a silent threat to her being which she ignored. Minato and Kishina, who were watching from the sidelines, quickly wrapped their arms around her and spun her around. Dante talked to him, Musum. He ll never be like you, so Dante waste your time. Minato said, whispering but Naruto's sharp ears picked up on it. Dust forget about him. Like he doesn't exist, alright Naomi-chan. Kishina offered, which Naomi nodded. Naomi quickly turned her head, but saw that Naruto wasn't there anymore. Yep, just like any other day. Naruto sighed as he bit into his sandwich. He sat on his bed lazily, taking out a sketchbook. Just another day, Hanari chan The voice echoed from inside his head. He smirked, shaking his head. That's right, Ju chan Or should I say, Kagayal Tsutsuki. Lady Kagaya bristled in annoyance. Auntie call me that, foolish boy. I told you to refer to me as Tsutsuki sama Naruto chuckled, before taking another bite of his sandwich. The day I call you that is when you finally come out of my head, na, Haim chan Naruto teased, twirling a pencil as he drew in his sketchbook. Kagaya huffed in annoyance, crossing her arms. You promise not to tease about that, Nari-chan. I'll come out eventually. Naruto nodded absentmindedly as he focused on his drawing. When was that again, Haim-chan? When I hit 16. Naruto felt a soft prodding in his mind as Kagaya nodded. Give or take. Until then, I can only send out my chakra from your body until my soul can fully manifest. Naruto nodded, putting down his pencil as he finished his sandwich. Hi, hi. I remember now. Naruto said, ripping the page out and posting it on an empty spot on the wall. It was a picture of a rabbit with a crown, bouncing about in the outdoors. I'll try to remember from now on Kachan. Flashback a year ago. The five-year-old Naruto was playing absentmindedly on a swing set by the park on top of the Hokage Monument as he gazed up at the moon. He fiddled with the seams of his yukata as Minato and Kishina took Naomi out again during the Kaiubi festival on their birthday well, Naomi's birthday, leaving Naruto behind at the house. He sighed as he turned his gaze back to the grass, messing about with it with his foot. He sighed and looked at the moon, a feeling of content washed over him. For as long as he could remember, the moon always looked illustrious to him, and the prospect of the night excited him. He operated better at night anyway, so much so that his sleep schedule shifted by doing activities at night and sleeping during the day. Which was why his parents forgot him so often or rather, one of the reasons. He scratched his face as he heard two people sit on the other swings to his left and right. Nice night, isn't he at Naruto? A bored Shikamaru Nara asked, dressed in a yukata swing slowly on the swing back and forth. The moon looks big enough to eat. Akamichi Chaoji said in return, dressed in a yukata as well before pulling out a bag of kaiubi shaped yaki and munching on one before passing it to Naruto. He sighed. It certainly is illuminating. He said, passing the bag to Shikamaru who lazily took one. You could certainly say that. He said, yawning before nibbling on the tayaki. The bag was passed back to Choji, who grabbed another. The trio sat in a comfortable silence as they enjoyed the tayaki, looking over Kanoha as the brilliant lights filled the town. Lanterns were strung about decoratively as the people chattered, the other kids playing games at stalls and food being served. 
All in all, it was a happy mood for the majority of Kanoha, save for a few. A rustling from behind snapped the three out of their stupor, as a raven-haired boy with a crest on his yukata sat in the grass in front of Naruto, propping up one leg for support, not before grabbing a Tayaki from the bag and settling down. Another day conquered. Sasuke Chiha said dejectedly before a shoe came flying out of the bushes and hitting Sasuke square in the head. Oh quiet, you. All you did was cry because your ka and forgot to buy tomatoes, and now you're reacting like you're re about to die. Hinata Hayuga emerged from the bushes, dressed in a kimono as a tick mark twitched on her brow as she retrieved her shoe. That still hurts like a bitch, Hinata. Sasuke yelled before another shoe impressively hit him in the face. And you still complain like one, Sasuke. Sakura Haruno dressed in a pink kimono came out of the bushes this time, earning a glare from Sasuke. She raised her killer intent on Sasuke, making him flinch and stop. Good boy. She smirked before her and Hinata sat on the grass next to Sasuke. Shikamaru smirked as he continued to nibble on his tayaki and lazily ducked as yet another shoot came flying, only from his side this time. Boy. Nara. Why didn't T you tell me you wake me at 6 p.m. like I told you? Ino Yamanaka stomped towards the group in a regular kimono carrying a picnic basket, her glare trying to burn a hole into Shikamaru's head before he waved her off. Troublesome woman he murmured and dodged another shoe. Nah, settle down, Ino-chan. Shiki s always like that. Chaoji intervened, making Ino grumble and blush in embarrassment. Sasuke, Hinata and Sakura parted for Ino, so she could lay the picnic blanket over the grass, and the basket was placed in the middle. Naruto chuckled in his head, pointing out how a ragtag group of five-year-olds could do this type of thing like teenagers. Ino pulled out several bentos with a slip of paper with their respected names before passing them out. Ah, san helped me make these, so you better eat them. Ino threatened, earning various voices of approval. There is more in here if you re still hungry, Kami's sake, knowing you guys. The septuplet enjoyed the romantic moonlit dinner in each other's presence, chatting with one another save for Naruto, who looked at the moon hovering above Konoha. Once finished, he set his chopsticks on top of the bento with a clack and got off the swing. Thanks for this, guys. He said, smiling one of his rare smiles. The other six smirked, nodding. Not a problem, Naruto Nai. Chaoji remarked. Shikamaru and Sasuke nodded in agreement. If there is something bothering you, you can always rely on your amados. Sakura said, smiling. Hinata and Ino nodded and smiled at Naruto too. Thanks, again. He turned and left, heading back to the Namika's estate. Naruto closed the door to his room and sat on his bed, gazing out the window and at the moon once again. He sighed and was about to lay down until a beam of light shot across the sky and at Naruto. Eyes widening, he was stunned as he basked in the light and swore that for a fraction of a second, a giant eye appeared over the moon's surface, purple in color with rings surrounding the pupil, as tama like shapes swirled in the ring's path before blacking out. Naruto stirred as the darkness was heavy on him before opening his eyes. His body was partially submerged in shallow water and the room dark, stretching endlessly upwards. His breathing started to quicken as he looked around for unfamiliar places. Finding none, he almost cried in panic until his eyes landed on a cage not too far away from him. He quickly ran to it, filled with a sense of escape until he reached the bars. A large paper seal was attached to the bars, and a glimmering ball of white light was trapped behind that. Curious, Naruto reached to the seal, and his fingers brushed it. Quickly, strange markings filled the darkness lining the walls in a brilliant white color, and the bars shimmered before disappearing in an explosion of light. Darkness filled his vision until a figure came into view. It looked to be of a woman's figure, with long white hair and two protrusions on the head, before she wrapped her arms around his body, pulling him into a hug. SHH it s alright. I am here. The voice cooed to Naruto, who was ensnared in its pleasant tone. Slowly drifting to sleep, he snuggled deeper into her warmth. Ah chan he murmured, making the woman's eyes widen a bit in surprise, before pressing Naruto deeper into her embrace. She laid her chin on top of his head and rubbed his back, before standing and turning around with Naruto still in her arms, going deeper into the abyss. Naruto woke up in his room in a cold sweat, the sun's rays beaming down on him from his window. He took a panicked breath in before looking about the room before realizing he was in bed. His body shivered when he thought back to the room with the odd symbols and the mysterious lady. Shaking his head, he left his room and closed the door quietly so as to not attract attention and headed to the bathroom. Glancing lazily at the clock, it read 8.23 am as he flicked his eyes to the mirror. Naruto jumped in surprise as he saw the same eye on the moon on his own two eyes. Curious, he leaned closer to the mirror and inspected it, moving his eyes around. What the hell is wrong with my eyes? Naruto thought, using a finger to pull his bottom eyelid down. It looked intimidating, with a royal purple coloring, not to mention the black rings and the occasional swirl of the three tomo in each ring. It honestly scared him a bit. 
that you appreciate my gift, Naruto-kun. A female voice echoed from his head, and Naruto jumped in surprise again. The voice giggled pleasantly in amusement. Who are you? And where are you? Naruto said aloud until he felt a sharp pain in his head. He crouched and clenched his head with both hands, wincing in pain. Auntie be so loud, idiot. Just use your thoughts to communicate with me. Naruto could visualize the voice crossing her arms and rolling her eyes in annoyance. Better yet, I'll talk to you face to face. Just stay still. Naruto felt a pulling sensation before he blacked out once again. Naruto woke up in a lush forest with flora growing around him as he started to get up. The sky was bright as the sun hovered overhead with clouds lazily crawling across it as the sounds of crashing waves filled his ears not too far away. A rabbit appeared out of the foliage and stood on its hind legs, seemingly to greet him as its nose twitched. Blinking, Naruto tentatively reached out to touch it. The rabbit didn't move as Naruto started to pet the rabbit on the head and felt an unknown tension in his heart ease slightly. The rabbit pressed into his palm before coiling itself around his arm as it made its way to Naruto, trying to get all of Naruto's touch. Naruto smiled softly as a grin stained his face and continued to watch the fluffy rabbit sit on his lap. The rustling from the bushes around him diverted his attention as more rabbits hopped out towards Naruto. Eyes wide, Naruto watched in awe as a horde of bunnies came into view and picked him up, acting as a means of transport and moving him deeper into the forest. Naruto giggled in joy at the softness of the rabbits as they eventually came across a clearing. Naruto noticed a lady with two protrusions from her head as her long white hair spilled over her back and across the grass. She was dressed in a silky white kimono with red-colored cuffs and tomo shapes above it. Much to Naruto's amusement, her gracefulness was broken when he noticed that she was prodding a rabbit in the face with a carrot. Mon eat the damn thing already. She whined in frustration, her prodding becoming more quickly. The rabbit just wiggled his nose as it was assaulted by a blurring carrot. Reaching the pinnacle of her frustration, she threw the carrot at the rabbit before the ball of fluff exploded into smoke. That was her facial expression and can't he really describe it without looking like a sack of potatoes. And Naruto giggled, catching her attention. Her face went through a range of emotions until it settled on a blush as she rubbed her arm in embarrassment. You didn't he see anything. She said sternly, closing the distance between her and the fluffy horde, which dispelled as soon as she picked Naruto up. She narrowed her eyes at him as she held him up by the armpits. Naruto got a better look at her face, as her oval-shaped eyebrows, pupil-less eyes and rose-colored lips made her look mysterious to him. Naruto smiled and moved a hand to her nose, giving it a light squeeze. Honk. Bugaya could only smile at the little boy's antics and scrunched her face. Someone's being a little silly, aren't you? She said, teasingly. Naruto could only bloat his face, making an eye expression before Kagaya hugged him. Naruto was hit by the familiar scent from before and instinctively snuggled deeper into the fabric, murmuring. Ah chan he said quietly, before snapping his head back in embarrassment. Kagaya stared at the boy, her eyes wide before her eyes lit it a bit. It's okay, Niru chan I'll be your kachan, chan she said quietly, her eyes moist as the two silently embraced. The two stood there in each other's embrace until Naruto wiped the remaining tears out of his eyes and looked at Kagaya, who smiled and ran her fingers through Naruto's hair. I don't even know you, and yet I feel safe around you he trailed off, looking away from her eyes. Kagaya smiled and continued to stroke his hair. But that's alright, Naruchan my Sachi. She said lovingly. Naruto didn't he say anything in an effort to keep his emotions from running astray as Kagaya set him down. My name is Kagaya Utsutsuki, the rabbit goddess. She said as Naruto looked up at her in awe. I am the one who gave you those eyes. She said, snapping a mirror out of thin air and put it to Naruto's face. The tomo spun slowly in the ring's path as he got a good look at it again. Kagaya pulled the mirror away and laid on her side, patting the grass beside her. We need to talk, Sachi. She said, summoning pillows for their heads to rest on. Naruto fell onto the grass with an audible POMF. What are we going to do on the bed of grass? Having told her entire backstory to Naruto, Naruto was stunned by how old Lady Kagaya was and gave her a hug from time to time because she has a big softy. Naruto said, earning him a carrot to the head. Needless to say, he was attentive when she got to describing the ocular powers she gave to Naruto. I gave you the Rinnegan, the most powerful of Dijutsu known to the shinobi world currently. However, yours is a more flexible one. Kagaya said, donning a school teacher outfit and a pair of secretary glasses at one point. A blackboard also appeared during her presentation with a stick of chalk. Kagaya drew the Rinnegan on the board to help explain it easier to Naruto, who was seated behind a desk. Now, what do I mean flexible? Simply, it means that you can evolve your Rinnegan and set levels for each Dejutsu power. She pushed the glasses back up her nose before drawing three other circles underneath the Rinnegan. 
In one, she drew three tomo in a ring, in the next she colored it lightly with a white chalk, and the last one was left blank until she drew an odd seal on it. Pointing to the first circle, she explained the powers of the Sharingan and drew another circle underneath with a different design. Explaining that it was the Manjekyo Sharingan, she drew yet another circle underneath it with a small addition to the Manjekyo Sharingan and described the effects of the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan. Naruto sat dumbly during the whole presentation but didn't he say anything, letting her finish before he bombarded her with questions. Moving on to the second circle, she described the effects of the Byakugan and drew a second circle underneath it. This one had three rose-shaped flower petals in it. This is the evolved version of the Byakugan, the Piasu Byakugan, Piercing Byakugan. This version lets you see blood flow and bodily functions such as heat production, down to how many tears the person SI is making. The Piasu Byakugan also grants ocular powers, like the Manjekyo Sharingan. It allows the user to summon Sujin, the god of water with his lance and shield. The user also gets an alternate version of Susanoo called Hachiman. At most, the difference will be the color scheme, and instead of being a giant construct like Sujin, it LL envelop the body in wrathful chakra for close quarter combat, granting large amounts of strength. Finally, the last ability granted is Uwaya Mitsumi, a combination of Sujin and Hachiman. Since the gentle fist was derived from the fluidity of Sujin's attacks and the powerful strikes from Hachiman, Uwaya Mitsumi stacks, Hachiman's strength and Sujin's speed, as well as an additional effect of healing the user during their frenzy. Kagaya finally paused, letting it all sink into Naruto's mind, which he totally didn't he get, but didn't he say anything. Drawing a third circle underneath that, she drew the same design only the pupil was half white and half black. Like the Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, the Eternal Piasu Byakugan lets the user prone to drawbacks from using the Piasu Byakugan. Blindness 1 TB a problem, and attacks are boosted. Physical defensive attributes are added, and an Aegis is granted to those who unlock the third stage and the ability to nullify elemental attacks. Now, when I said it was flexible, it means that you can use a level 2 Sharingan in tandem with the Piasu Byakugan or a plain Byakugan with an Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan. However, you do need to unlock these Dejutsu powers before you can use them, otherwise you'd be a broken character, and we can t have that at the moment. Kagaya finished, glancing at the reader before it flashed back to Naruto. He nodded slowly in confusion before Kagaya returned to the blackboard. Kagaya drew a the third circle with a seal drawn on it came into play. She waved her hand over to Naruto, who slowly got up and made his way to the third circle. Now, what are the five basic elements, Naruto-chan? Naruto put a finger to his chin and adopted a thinking face. A wind, water, earth, fire and lightning. Kagaya patted Naruto on the head. Good. And the many sub-elements to come with it will be under the Rinnegan's mercy. Kagaya said, cackling. Naruto waited patiently until she calmed down to continue her presentation. But what is the one thing that people could never control? What two elements happen every day, but no person can hope to bend its will? Kagaya prodded Naruto, who thought for a good five minutes before his eyes widened drastically. Light and dark. He exclaimed, to Kagaya's delight. Exactly. This seal will show you how much of an affinity you have to light and dark elements. She said, proudly, to see a confused look. But, if no one can control it, what makes you think I can? He asked. Kagaya stuck her outer lip out. A good question, Narupai. Narupai. What but, do you know who I am? She asked, leaning into Naruto's personal space. Kagaya Kachan. He said innocently, tilting his head. Kagaya stumbled as she tried to hold all of her willpower to not lump Naruto and squeal Kawei. Clearing her throat and waving her hand to her face to shoo away the blush, she shook her head. I am a goddess, Naruchan. Do you doubt my ability? She asked, a ghoulish face gracing her features. Naruto wisely shook his head vigorously. Good Sachi. Now, place your hand on the seal and think good and bad thoughts. She walked a bit away, giving Naruto space. Closing his eyes, Naruto thought about the pains of being neglected, and it filled his body as he shook. Suddenly switching, he thought of the potential of a better day despite the pain, and a determined crossed his face. The thoughts of his Kachan, Kagaya, made him smile and feel warm inside. After a few more minutes, he pulled his hand away and opened his eyes. Kagaya approached and gasped at the result. One half was completely black, as it seemed to pull Kagaya into an abyss, while the other side was completely white, blindingly so as it seemed like staring into the sun. The circle slowly oscillated until it became quicker and quicker until it stopped abruptly. A small circle of white appeared in the black and vice versa, resembling the yin-yang symbol. Kagaya quickly crouched and spun Naruto around, looking him dead in the eyes. Sachi Yuri going to do great things and be a great thing to the world. She said, her eyes traveling across his face. Don't he let anyone tell you otherwise. She wrapped him in her embrace shortly before standing back up, with Naruto piggybacking on her.
Now let us go. Oh where, Kachan? Naruto said as he rested his head on her shoulder. We re going to start training, Neru-chan. Ounce. The 20-year-old Naruto stood before Kagaya, dressed in a garb similar to Kagaya, only instead of red seams it was orange. Naruto was drenched in sweat and panted as he bowed low to his mother. Thanks you for everything, Kagaya Kachan. He smiled before fainting, falling backwards. Kagaya smirked as she laid down next to her Sachi, stroking his kissed him on the forehead and lifted him to a king-sized bed that she summoned. Sighing, she got on the bed and laid next to Naruto and deflated to relax, snuggling into Naruto's chest. Naruto however, woke up in a different place. More specifically, a bathroom. Naruto's eyes reverted back to their dark blue color and he sighed, cracking his back. When you return back to the real world, only 10 minutes would be passed. For every minute out there, 2 years will pass here, alright Naruchan. So don't be surprised when you wake back up as a 7 year old. Kagaya waggled her finger at Naruto, who nodded. What about my body here? He asked, before Kagaya smirked. Don't worry, Sachi. It'll be fine. Anytime you return to your mindscape, you'll wake up in the body here so no worries. I'll just be using it as a snuggle buddy, since the body will be sleeping until you return. Kagaya said, smiling. Naruto shook his head, smiling at his mother's antics. Besides, my soul will manifest outside of your body, so I'll be able to hold you for real, okay Narupai. If you train so your body can accommodate the physical strength as your 20-year-old self here, I'll be able to come out sooner. She winked. Naruto nodded and hugged Kagaya one last time. Thanks again, Kachan. Welp, 13 years to go. Naruto stretched his body as his sister Naomi pounded on the door, screaming for him to get out already. Having a twin sucks. Having a twin that s your parents' favorite sucks more. Having a twin that your parents love more and being left in the dust sucks donkey duty. Especially at a young age, where your two San and Ka San are still trying to come to grips with what you and your twin want and not screw it up. I never had to go through that though, so fortunately and unfortunately, lucky me. I've seen the looks Minato and Kashina give me, like I am the biggest mistake of their lives. But, you win some and you lose some, right? Anyway, let us get things out of the way first. My name is Naruto. Just Naruto. Not Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, just Naruto. I am the twin brother of my sister Naomi, who is also the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. I don't call my parents with the honorifics because they don't deserve any honor from me, so why bother? This is a recalling about how I was neglected by my family in my first decade of living. And no, telling you my specific age doesn't matter. Because it is a recalling of an event in the past, so it means little if I tell you I am 7 or 11 when I am telling you these accounts. But let us get to business, shall we? See, it all started when Naomi decided to use the family as a catalyst to get what she wanted. A new toy, a place to eat, yada yada. Minato and Kashina would follow her by the nose and try to make her happy. She even got the limited shinobi man figurine that I've been aiming for at the store, and she just waltzes up to the clerk and asks for it. For free. And she got it. For free. Meanwhile, I've been around and about, doing my own thing with my buddies. Sasuke, Sakura, Ino, Shikamaru, Chaoji, Hinata, Kiba and Shino, the two are away on a mixed clan gathering, since the two clans are close friends. Flea removal and that stuff for the Inuzuka Esnin dogs and whatnot. Of course, Naomi and the other two don't know since they don't make the space to care. I don't know if they have the capacity to care, who knows. Anyway, we were at this place called Ichiraku Raymond. The place is pretty good and I know the people there, Tuchi Jiji and AM Ni are good people, and they have good company. We were on a rare family outing, when the mom and pops take notice of me from time to time when they forgot about me again, when Minato ordered for the three of them. Gucci Gigi didn't he say anything as he placed my favorite Raymond combo before me, dubbed the Swirling Fury Raymond. Loaded with spices and hot sauce, not to mention the extra pieces of Naruto in it. Ironic, no. Anyway, Kishina gasped when she saw the item on the menu and thought it was a tribute to her, being from the land of Yuzu and having a title similar to the namesake. I rolled my eyes as she pointed it out to Naomi and Minato, whilst Tucci and AM glanced at each other worriedly. Their eyes soon met mine, but I reassured them with my eyes, and they sighed. But Kashina just walled T shut. Up. It was like listening to an old washing machine during its spin cycle. Radley and obnoxious as heck, she continued to brag about it to Naomi and Minato, who were having a jolly all time. Having quite enough, I got up and moved from the stool to a booth a bit away from them. Naomi noticed the creaking sounds of me getting up and made her way to my booth, leaving Minato and Kashina engrossed in their conversation. So, Naruto team. Yuri still the loser you are when you were born. Naomi said haughtily. I rolled my eyes, looking disinterested. I didn't respond, making her try harder to rouse a sound out of me. 
Boy, speak to me when addressed, Baka. She leaned in to try to intimidate me by getting into my personal space or tried to. It's pretty hard when you re across somebody and a table s in your way. Not to mention that Naomi was pretty short, so that only lessened the effect. I continued to eat my ramen, and I could see from the corner of my eye that she was getting frustrated. In a fit of anger, she launched my bowl across the room and it smashed into pieces, strands of ramen all over the place. Don T even asked about the broth. Minato and Kashina immediately rushed over to see what was the commotion, and Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni peered from behind. What is going on, are you alright? Minato asked. I noticed that Minato and Kashina didn't T spare a glance my way. Naomi immediately worked her charm, faking a bruise and moistening her eyes. Naruto tried to pour the broth on me so I had to hit it away. She said, her voice breaking to keep up the act. Finally, the two noticed me with a hate-filled glare. Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni could only look on from the sidelines, afraid to do anything. Not that I blame them. You try fighting a pair of S-class shinobi with a mop and a wooden fence for a shield and get back to me on that. You insolent, little brat. Minato had all but shouted, red in the face. Kashina wormed her way in, picking me up by the hem of my shirt. Why can't you be a good kid for once? All I hear are complaints from Naomi and they re all about you. She shouted in my face. And, being a toddler with your parents practically yelling bloody murder on you, it is pretty scary. I looked around, confused and almost crying as Minato and Kashina continued their verbal assault on me. Naomi could only sneer with malice as my own parents shook me emotionally. Soon, they got tired of yelling at me and picked up Naomi. Come on Kashina, let us go home. It is obvious that Naruto doesn't know how to be a good child. Kashina turned to pay Tuchi Jiji with a few bills. Sorry about that, Ichiraku-san. That idiot boy is always causing trouble. It is like he doesn't want to be loved. She exclaimed. She then turned her eyes to me. Auntie come home until you learn to behave. She bellowed, leaving me alone with Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni as they left for the house. I could only stare in shock and fear as A.M. Ni picked me up and hugged me on the floor. I started to bawl. I didn't tea go home that night. Or the next day. Or the next few days. Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni had to take care of me during those days when I started to cry at random times. Heck, his wife, Karami Ba even threatened to place a ban on them, but Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni managed to calm her down, saying they LL lose money and lose their home. I overheard this and instead of anger, I felt shame. Shame that I am a burden to them for them to have to protect me from my own family. As a way to combat my burden, I asked Tuchi Jiji to teach me how to make ramen, which he gladly took upon to continue his legacy in the craft. Still learning to this day and making different combinations are hard enough. Now, let us get this out of the way. Minato and Kashina would never hit a child, they read good people in that sense. A child abuser will get shot down in the court of the daimyo faster than you can say henge, hokage or not. When I returned, which was about five days afterwards, since learning from Tuchi Jiji is fun, they didn't tea notice. Save for Naomi, who continued to throttle me into the bad light, which made Kashina and Minato retaliate by locking me in my room or not giving me dinner. Stupid for them they don't know I could just sneak out of the window. Well, for a while. Minato found out and had the window locked from the other side and placed an alarm sealed by the door, so whenever I leave the room they know that I am outside and likewise when I go back in. After that, they ended up slowly erasing me from their lives. The pictures of all four of us were replaced with newer updated versions without me in it. My drawings and toys were burned. Even my plate to eat with was thrown out. And I have to stay with them, otherwise Minato would get suspicious with me sleeping over and convince the parents that I am just trouble when I walked in. During my time learning ramen making with Tuchi Jiji and A.M. Ni, Karami Ba is the manager and orders the ingredients. I met my ragtag friends. Each of them has a lasting impression when they first came to the stands. Kiba came with his mom Tsum and sister Hana. Emma Nakamaru, his nin dog, tried to nab some meat from the grilling station by the counter, which earned him a hard bopping with a metal ladle. A.M. Ni loved that ladle, and Kiba S. had put a dent in it. Shino came with his parents and ate the ramen with his insect hoard, making A.M. shriek and faint. Shikamaru came with Chaoji, who slurped up a XXL bowl-sized serving of miso, beef, pork and shrimp ramen, while Shikamaru, who didn't tea get any sleep that day, fell asleep in the bowl. Sasu came with Ino and Sakura who were talking about beauty tips. He looked lost so I chatted with him a bit. He ended up laughing so loud after I told him a joke that Sakura elbowed him in the gut while Ino slapped him. Feeling bad, I bought a bag of tomatoes and gave it to his brother Itachi as an apology. Hinata was the most interesting to me, however. She shied away from me when I tried to make conversation with her, blushing and fiddling with her fingers. I assumed she was a shy and timid girl, but that turned out false. Well she was eating a team of Jen and had arrived earlier and got rowdy, elbowing her in the side. 
She stopped eating for a minute before she slammed her chopsticks on the table with an audible crack. I think the chopstick split in the middle. Lengthwise too. She ended up grabbing two of them with her hands and biting the hem of the shirt of the third one and threw them out of the stand and beat them up. Truly, it was like watching a butcher stab, roast and slice up a pig. Or rather three, since the team of Jenin suffered from cuts, Juakin strikes and ended up as a smoking pile on the street. She was ferocious. She came back after the scuffle and wiped the blood off with a moist outlet and looked at me hard. You didn't see anything. I nodded stiffly as Hanada paid the tip. When I asked Tuchi Jiji and Aim Ni, who were in the stockroom bringing out more ingredients, Tuchi Jiji just laughed. Oh don't you worry about that, Naruto. The blood princess has just been reincarnated, that s all. I looked at him confused before turning away slowly. They came back the next week and the nine of us became quick friends. I told Minato and Kashina that I got a job so they won't get suspicious, not that they would really care. So, that s about it I suppose. I got yelled at by my parents, practically disowned, really. Seals were placed in my room, I was taken in by Tuchi Jiji, learned how to make ramen, met some people and made friends with them, and the rest is history. Naruto cracked his back as he stood up from his bed. Grunting, he put on his shoes and used his mokuten to bend the wood from his room outwards, allowing a hole to appear. Stepping out, he leaped from the hole to the ground before sealing the hole back. Looking around, he decided to go train. Say, Kachan. How am I doing on training? Naruto thought as he entered a brush of woods into an open field. Also known as Training Ground 47, the Forest of Death, Naruto continued to stroll on through. You're doing okay for now, Naruto-chan. Kagaya said, examining Naruto's old body. I do say at the rate you're training at, when you become 16, I'll be able to manifest fully into the real world. She said as she spoon-fed Naruto's old body with some chunky carrot soup. Naruto shook his head as he mentally saw Kagaya wipe the dribble that managed to spill over his soul self's mouth. Why do you keep feeding my soul? It's not going to give me any benefit, Kachan. Naruto thought, making Kagaya pout and cross her arms. I am training for the day that I come out so I can feed you. She responded, blushing a bit. Oh, Kachan. That is sweet. Naruto teased, smiling. Kagaya didn't he respond as he continued to make his way through the forest. The animals around him started to trail behind him, communicating to each other with a variety of sounds. This started to happen when Naruto first came to the forest. The animals attacked him on instinct but were all put down in their place. Needless to say, they acknowledge Naruto as their undisputed master. He also gives very good back rubs and belly scratches. Soon, Naruto reached a clearing in the forest. A very wide area of wooden and stone training dummies stood amongst it as kunai and shuriken chipped the material. He could already hear a voice from the center as the figure bounced around the dummies. The only defining feature that he could make out was a purple pineapple-shaped hairstyle and a tan trench coat. Clearing his throat, the figure stopped and looked at Naruto, smiling. Oi, Gaki. What took you so long? I've even been preparing myself when we finally spar again. The figure said. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be Anko, the Dango fanatic and former student of Orochimaru, the Hibi Sanin. Oh, you know. Naomi tried to talk me down, and Minato and Kashina tried to ignore me. You know, the usual. Naruto said, nonchalant. Anko nodded, brushing off the wood shavings from her kunai. So, are you ready, Gaki? Anko said, getting into her stance. Naruto rolled his eyes, before vanishing in a stream of blue light. I already beat you without using my power, unless you want me to bring it to the table. He said, confidence filling his voice. Anko just scoffed, throwing her arms forward as if waving something away. Do what you want, I'll have my victory this time. She said before getting into her stance. On three. One. Naruto rolled his shoulders and leg joints out with an audible pop. Do. Anko spun the kunai by the ring, making it look like a blurred disc. 3. Anko vanished in a body flicker before reappearing behind Naruto, who didn't he move. With one arm cocked back with the kunai and another stretched out, she struck. Naruto dodged by moving backwards, bumping into her chest as grabbed the arm with the kunai and threw her over him. She spun as she landed on the grass and melted into the dirt. Anko burrowed her way towards Naruto who jumped as soon as he felt the earth beneath him feel lighter. High in the air, Naruto enhanced the gravity on his body, and he rocketed toward his previous spot, his legs smashing the dirt where Anko previously was into large chunks. Quickly, he shot out three shuriken behind him, where Anko had to Kawarimi out of harm's way. Dropping the ranged aspect, Anko appeared before him already with her fist moving fast into his face. Naruto parried by pushing her arm out of the way, as the two exchanged a flurry of strikes. Naruto chipped her sides as he twisted and curved his fists into what looked like a piece of orange rubber whipping her. 
Anko grit her teeth as she put her arms in front of her face to block, only to have it shattered by Naruto's small fist warming his way underneath it. The two finally separated as Anko panted, compared to Naruto who was sweating a bit. At ready, Anko ni. I'll show you what I can do. Naruto said as he disappeared in another beam of blue light. Naruto reappeared far away from her as his hands glowed. In his hands was a double-headed staff with a blue orb at each end, decorated with a gold regal design. In front was a glowing ball of white light with white rings. Anko can only watch in awe as he used his shadow clone jutsu to summon nine other Naruto's who threw three kunai each. Kunai multiplication jutsu. The nine voices shouted as 30 kunai became 300. Quickly dispelling all nine, he struck his double-headed staff diagonally in the air. Reflection. For a brief moment, a large blue rhombus appeared vertically attached by gold brackets, and white wings flourished before disappearing, as a beam of light shot out of the staff. It quickly bounced in between all 300 kunai before striking Anko at the speed of light, all 300 beams of light. Unable to move, Anko was struck by the most painful attack she ever felt, before Naruto teleported in light again, an audible tingle sound, like wind chimes knocking against each other. Naruto reappeared before her as he grabbed the middle of the staff and slammed it down, the orbs changing from light blue to a dark red. Apocalypse. He shouted. A purple vortex appeared above and beneath Anko, coming up to her knees as she was now bathed by purple darkness filling the space. Like a typhoon of light and dark, the light beams and dark energy exploded into a violent display of black and white. Naruto stowed the staff away as the ball of light vanished, revealing a fairly beaten down Anko. I held back, Anko ni. Naruto said, smugly as he smiled at the dazed Anko. She was smoking slightly as she slowly got up, her clothes charred. Holy shit, Gaki. She shouted as she wiggled her body like a wet dog trying to dry off. Magically, the charred clothes returned to their previous condition. What the hell was that? She waved her arms up and down, frantic. Naruto chuckled sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head. That was my light and dark abilities. I didn't to use my full power though. I'd say about 3% of power was put into the attack. He said, making Anko freeze before collapsing. The H3% Anko said quietly, her eyes became spirals as she fainted. Apparently, Naruto's attack was super effective. Naruto sighed as he put a hand to his forehead. Naruto put two fingers to his mouth as he whistled loudly. Not a second later, a large tiger came out of the nearby brush. Roar. The tiger barked at Naruto. It laid on its belly as it sat on the grass, sphinx-like. Naruto sat beside it and scratched its head, especially reaching behind its ears. The tiger purred as it leaned into Naruto's palm, its ears flicking occasionally. Roar, roar, roar. It purred, lowering its head to the grass. Roar, roar, roar to you too. Naruto teased. After a few minutes, Naruto stopped scratching its head, much to the tiger's chagrin. Take Anko to the hut nearby. Kur and I will be there, so just walk inside, okay? The tiger nodded, before wrapping its body around Naruto. Roar. It said, before nuzzling his side. Naruto smiled and hugged its head, petting it. Naruto broke off the hug, and the tiger started to make its way to the hut. The aw, I want a cuddly tiger too. Kagaya made her presence known again, stamping her foot lightly in envy. Naruto chuckled, before the same tiger was conjured into his mindscape, to Kagaya's glee. Kagaya glomped the tiger as the two rolled around in a hugging battle. It looked like Kagaya was winning as she wrapped her legs around the tiger's body before laying down on it. She drooled in joy as she put her cheek between the tiger's ears. Hu 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 hu. Kagaya murmured on as she hugged the tiger's underbelly. The tiger can only roar at the sudden contact before pronking his way in a random direction. Pami damn it, Kachan. Naruto said, before vanishing in a shimmering light. Naomi was outside the Namika's estate, being tutored by her parents, Minato and Kashina. She struck the straught reigning dummy with a fist to the head, before doing a roundhouse kick to the body, shredding the straw just a bit. Kashina gave a holler as Minato clapped at her display. Way to go, Nachan. Kashina smiled, picking up Naomi in a tight hug. Minato chuckled as he saw Naomi squirm under Kashina's bone-crushing embrace. Ma, Makushi-chan, you re-crushing Naomi. Minato lightly chided her as she looked at Naomi's blue face. Quickly, she let go and dropped Naomi onto the ground. Naomi grumbled, dusting her skirt off as she got back up. Meanwhile, Minato and Kashina were talking amongst themselves. She has got the katas down, and her striking power are good for a girl her age. I think I should teach her that. Minato whispered as Kashina nodded. But LL help her in her defense and offensive areas and give her an edge in battle. I should teach her some kinjutsu too just to be safe. Kashina added as Naomi got back to attacking the straw dummy. I got just the weapon too. Minato raised an eyebrow. The Yuzu manifest weapon system. He implored. Kashina could only nod excitedly. 
Now now, I think it might be too early for her to learn that. Given that it is too big for her. Kashina nodded again. Well, I learned it from Mito Bachin when I was her age. I remember when I got the jitters when I got it too. She said, idly scratching her arms. Jitters? This is new, Kushi-chan. Minato said. Kashina could only fold her arms. It has said that the true wielder of the Yuzu Manifest Weapon System will awaken its true form. As you know, it is in its unawakened form, a plain-looking katana with a spiral on the handle. But when it awakens, it will merge with the body, and the true heir can summon any weapon at their disposal, hence, Manifest Weapon System. Kashina concluded. Minato could only nod slowly. That said, the person that isn't T the true heir will get an injury when they touch the spiral, ranging from a light shocking feeling, like I did, to potentially death if their deeds are with ill intent. Being young, I was innocent, so it gave me a light shock. She finally concluded. Minato nodded, taking a minute to absorb the information. Wanna see if Naomi can use it? He said offhandedly. Kashina adopted a thinking expression before nodding. Sure, let me get it. She made her way into the house as Naomi finished beating down the straw target. Minato approached and placed a hand on her shoulder, congratulating her. Since you've been doing so well, I'll teach you my signature technique Naomi. The Rasengan. Minato grinned as Naomi's eyes sparkled. Really too Chan Minato nodded and Naomi squealed in glee at the news. The auburn hair girl could explode at any moment at the prospect of learning a high-powered ninjutsu when Kashina came back out with a long object trapped in a black cloth adorned with gold designs and a gold spiral in the middle. Dada, ah. Here it is. Kashina said, carefully unwrapping the sword. She left the cloth on the sheath as she held it there and slowly moved it to Naomi. Consider this my early birthday present to you, Musum. Kashina smiled as Naomi's eyes gained an impossible gleam. Just make sure to touch the spiral symbol on the handle, notch and. Slowly, Naomi took the sword by the sheath and used her other hand to grab the spiral. What was expected turned out to be wrong, as the sword glowed blue and sparks of electricity crackled around the sword, acting as a barrier. Naomi shrieked in pain so loudly, the nearby birds flew away. Minato and Kashina didn't t bother taking a second to wrap their heads around the sight before them, as they dashed towards Naomi, trying to wrench the sword away from her. Minato got shocked by a stray strand of electricity, while Kashina fared a little better. Thanks to her Yuzumaki blood, she withstood most of the pain and managed to pull it away. Naomi fell to the ground, and Minato scrambled to pick her up, cradling her body in his arms. This can't be happening Kashina said, finally taking things into account. She stared at the sword in a mix of fear and curiosity. The intensity of the light show before frightened her, but made her question who the air could possibly be. Deciding to test it herself, she grabbed the handle of the sword. An even bigger dome of lightning erupted from the hilt as it wrapped Kashina in its vortex of blue lightning. She didn't even last five seconds as she fainted, her hand unwrapping from the handle and twitching on the ground. Minato couldn't react any faster since Naomi was in her arms, and he could only watch in silent horror, fearing for his wife's life as she crumpled onto the floor. Taking into precaution to what happened, he summoned two clones. One to carry Kashina and the other to wrap the katana back into its cloth and dashed into the house to administer aid. Earlier. Naruto reappeared in front of the entrance of a wooden hut a bit away from where he defeated Anko in a brutal display of light and dark attacks. It was a medium-sized hut that was placed just above a cliff overlooking a waterfall with a patio that stretched on the side of the house. Naruto noticed that the white tiger from before was resting on its paws, looking at the scenery. It turned its head as it heard Naruto's footsteps clunk up the stairs. Naruto walked over to the tiger and sat next to it as it laid its head on his lap. How is Anko? Naruto asked as he absentmindedly petted the tiger. Roar. The tiger responded, purring comfortably as Naruto scratched behind its ears. Well, I am glad you made it here quickly. You should probably return home, you know how your wife gets. Naruto said, as the tiger reluctantly raised its head. Giving one last nuzzle, it slowly made its way down the stairs and back towards the forest. Sighing, Naruto cracked his back and proceeded to enter the hut. Hello, hello. Naruto greeted as he quickly ducked, a kunai flew over his head. Hitsukaden made a face of disapproval. Simon, Anko Nichan. That's not nice. He pouted before he sidestepped a snake that barreled at him. Screw you, Gaki. You're really lucky I didn't use my curse mark on you. She shouted before she yelped as Kurinai shoved her bandaged body back onto the bed. Hi hi, Anko. You need to relax. Kurinai said before she turned to Naruto and smiled. Good morning, Ataudo. She said as she applied some cream on a burnt area on Anko's back, making her scream. Morning, Kurini chan He said as he approached the bed. Anko was naked, save for some bandages that wrapped tightly against her chest and a pair of boxers that saved her modesty. His eyes traveled to her neck, where he smiled nostalgically at the curse mark. 
Flash back. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the animals in the forest of death. He had originally came here to see what the fuss was about when he overheard some Chuanin talking about the forest and how deadly the animals were. Naruto decided to investigate and ended up in the situation shortly after. They had surrounded him when he first stepped foot into their territory, his unknown scent putting them on alert. He was about to attack when a purple-haired Kinoichi landed in front of him, smirking. What is this? And you pray for me? Anko said with a glint of mischief. Her smile showed killing intent in an effort to scare the seven-year-old in front of her. You better be careful, kid, or else I'll end up sacrificing you to my snakes. However, that was not the case as Naruto's expression deadpanned. Eerie weird. Naruto said before turning around and proceeding deeper into the forest. Anko could only stare dumbly as the blonde mop of hair disappeared behind some shrubbery. Naruto had came across a clearing in the forest after about five minutes had passed after meeting the odd lady before he heard the shrubs behind him rustle violently. Wait a minute. The voice said as the purple-haired lady launched herself in front of Naruto again. Who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? Anko said with a deadly expression. That soon collapsed as Naruto tilted his head cutely and scratched the back of his head, his eyes gazing towards the sky. Anko had to use all of her willpower not to hug the seven-year-old who wandered into her forest. Achan, do you know who this lady is? Naruto asked himself. Kagaya only grunted as she didn't he respond. She was sleeping, as her face was planted firmly into a fluffy pillow with her arms and legs stretched out like a star. Unfortunately, her horns had pierced the pillow, and the fluff started to escape from its confines. Deciding that his Kachan was down for the count, Naruto returned to the purple lady. No. Naruto said before looking back at Anko. Anko could only open her mouth in shock at the gaki. You never heard of me Anko asked. Naruto shook his head. The snake mistress. The great and powerful Hibi-chan. The sexy and beautiful, heartbreaking. Male dominating, Anko Midarashi she spouted. Naruto could only cross his eyes, thinking, before shaking his head again. Anko closed her mouth as her head dipped, her eyes overcast by a shadow as her body shook. Naruto decided it would be a good time to inch away from the purple-haired lady, not wanting to be around her anymore. He turned around until he felt something whiz by and scratch his cheek. A kunai embedded itself on the tree behind him as he touched his cheek, blood coming out of it. Hehehehe. <laughs> Anko cackled manically as her eyes looked frenzied. Naruto's own eyes widened as Anko started launching kunai at him. Thinking fast, he dodged the volley of kunai until she vanished. He turned around and saw Anko behind him, her smile feral as she came for the kill. Not that she was going to, she just wanted to scare the kid. She had a reputation to retain after all. Just as she was about to slash at him, she felt something hard hit her stomach that punted her against a tree. Naruto had his leg outstretched as he lowered it, before wisely using chakra on his legs, jumping back into the trees. At back here. Naruto heard the indignant cry before snakes started to fly at him. Naruto dodged a few until he felt teeth sink into his leg, making him lose balance and fall to the ground. Immediately, Anko bursted from the foliage and crouched above Naruto, smiling. The snake had injected some venom into his leg, making it paralyzed. Yuri pretty good, Gaki. But not good enough. Naruto panted heavily, as the venom numbed his leg. He stared at Anko until a visible black circle on her neck caught his eye. Anko followed his gaze and her expression dropped, saddened. She quickly adjusted her trench coat to cover the mark, but Naruto was already pushing her down onto the grass, trying to get a better look at it. Instead of the three Tomo design, a whirlpool took its place with a line through it. He could feel the negative energy vanishing and being replaced with his own. Naruto, oblivious to Anko's occasional twitches, had undone the pose he tied Anko in. He only realized that she was unconscious, save for the occasional twitch her legs did. Thinking that he had hurt her, he felt sorry and wrote a quick note on a piece of paper he had on his person and placed it in front of Anko, before going back to Kanoha proper, having his fill of adventure. Shortly after, Anko had woken up and discovered the note. It read. Hello snake lady. I am sorry. Naruto. Anko could only stare, incredulously at the note before crumpling it in her hand and tossed it. She sat on the grass as she remembered what the kid had done to her. She shivered, wrapping her arms around her frame before having an atomic blush. Then flashback. Naruto shook his head at the fond memory where Anko had found him a few days later and hugged him. Though, she was embarrassed, hugging a seven-year-old in a provocative way as she felt his head between her dot. Her and I had finished applying the soothing cream to Anko's back, who hissed in pain before being cooled down thanks to a breeze, courtesy of Naruto. Thanks a lot, Gaki. She mumbled, bummed out at her inactivity. He chuckled as Kurinai decided to go to the kitchen to cook something. Are you hungry, Naruto? Kurinai asked from the kitchen. She heard him say no before a deafening boom had rang out. 
Kurinai jumped, as did Anko and Naruto stormed out of the door to investigate. A large dome of blue lightning had appeared at Kanoha as Naruto's eyes widened. It receded and Naruto was about to speak before a larger dome of lightning appeared. Thinking fast, he rushed back to Kanoha, getting ready if there were enemy nin in the town. When Naruto had appeared back in Kanoha, he had landed on the roof of a building. The lightning was coming from his home and he quickly darted towards it with the intent of rescuing his family if needed. Just because they shunned him, it would be illogical to return the negative feelings. It would only build up if it came to that. Naruto had jumped over various houses before jumping into his backyard, where the source of the lightning came from. He saw Minato summon two clones before picking up Naomi and Kishina and dragged them into the house, closing the door with his foot. He landed on the training ground and saw a sword and shroud, where blue electricity crackled violently as it seemed to glow before disappearing. I better get this away, who knew what the hell Minato and Kishina were doing. Naruto said before grabbing the shroud and sword. Immediately, he felt a pulling on his mindscape and collapsed as the shroud and sword had turned into orbs of light and went into Naruto's body. Naruto's eyes furrowed as he felt his clothes stick to him. Slowly, he opened his eyes. A temple had greeted his eyes as he scanned the area. The temple had many ancient drawings of battles that were lost to him. Ruins had encircled around him as a small puddle of water in the center was filled. Blue wisps flew around the temple, but what really drew his attention was a staircase. A really long staircase, as it stretched to almost infinity until it stopped on what appeared to be a throne in the distance. And. If you can t imagine it, think of the fairy temple in Laws. Ha-chan, where am I? Naruto asked, to receive no response. He scratched his head, confused. If this was his mindscape, where was Kagaya? Unless. Naruto shook his head and decided to ascend the staircase, seeing no other way to progress. He climbed the first ten steps before he heard a warping sound. He turned around and widened his eyes as the steps started to vanish in a blue vortex. Naruto began running up the stairs with the intent of not being dragged into whatever the hell the portal did to the steps. Best of the body. A voice said. Naruto had a hard time distinguishing the gender of it since his mind was racked with panic. Make it to the platform to clear this trial. The voice said again. Naruto looked around, looking for a platform until he saw the stairs a distance ahead of him separate as a large platform took its place. Running on adrenaline, he powered through the steps and eventually made it to the circular platform before collapsing. An audible ding was heard as Naruto relaxed to catch his breath. The next test. Mind. The voice said. Naruto didn't he bother to move as he was still tired. The objective survive. The voice vanished. Naruto was left confused until the area around him warped into Konoha. More specifically, his home. He saw his family giving him disapproving looks of unbridled fury, glaring at him. Their shapes twisted and turned into black demons as it proceeded to assault Naruto. Their guttural growls screeched into his ears as tendrils sprouted from their backs, piercing his skin. He could only scream as he felt his being torn to pieces. Naruto gasped as the pain only increased in severity. Naruto was about to give up until he felt a warm presence on his back amidst all the chaos. White delicate fingers caressed his head as the demons retreated, growling. His wounds started to heal as he was enveloped by the figure behind him. But that's alright, Sachi. Kagaya whispered into his ear. Naruto's eyes widened before relaxing, subconsciously pressing against Kagaya for comfort. Mommy will always be here for you. Kagaya finished. Naruto felt his eyes tear up, his heart aching to hear those words for the longest. He silently cried as Kagaya had wrapped Naruto into a loving embrace. The demons screeched as their bodies dissolved, as black dust blew away against the wind. Naruto's crying stopped as he turned to face Kagaya, a smile adorned on her face. She slowly faded away before she kissed his forehead and vanished. Naruto shook his head and regained his senses as an audible ding sounded again. An invisible force nudged Naruto towards the staircase as he glanced upward. The throne seemed closer now as Naruto ascended. The final test. Soul. The voice said. Naruto had reached the top of the staircase, his body sore and his emotions fluctuating. The throne vanished and in its place a large door stone door appeared. Carved into it was a large tree as it climbed all the way into the blue abyss of a ceiling. Naruto approached slowly as he saw a particular spot for a hand to fit into. It was at the base of the tree and had something inscribed underneath it. What is Naruto Uzumaki's greatest goal in life? It said. Naruto closed his eyes and breathed in before pressing his hand into the handprint. The innocence of others. To ensure no child goes through life without family, to ensure no father has to bury their children, and to ensure that every mother live without grief of their loved ones. He said resolutely. A moment passed before the large door glowed. White lines flowed from the handprint as it climbed the tree and separated into the branches and shot outwards. There was a chime. That answer. And the door opened. 
Naruto was blinded by a bright light, covering his eyes with his hands. The light soon died down as Naruto struggled to make out what was behind the door. The throne from before soon appeared behind it as the door shimmered out of existence. Naruto cautiously approached, looking around it for any traps or the sort before sitting down, deeming it safe. As soon as he sat down, two bright orbs came out of his body and floated before him. The orbs glowed before it took shape of two figures. A sword and a shroud. Naruto recognized it as the objects he picked up when he arrived home as the items started to shimmer. The sword turned into a figure of 5'9", as it started to become curvier. The light dimmed as it revealed a woman who had blonde hair and dark skin, with a large bust and an hergless body. She was dressed in a butler uniform with coattails that did nothing but accentuate her curves. Her eyes showed nothing except for stoicism, save for the millimeter glare that was directed at Naruto. The shroud grew until it appeared only a head shorter than Naruto. She had red hair and light skin and was dressed in a pale yellow blouse that had flowers on it. She had a megawatt grin as she started to run and launch herself at Naruto. On each one. She exclaimed as the red missile blurred and crashed into Naruto's stomach. She smiled as Naruto tried to recover, giving a hug and making a hum of delight. The taller woman only made a sound of disgust as her glare increased. Such unruly behavior, especially at a creature such as you. She directed the insult at Naruto, who only narrowed his eyes. She was about to say something until the little girl jumped and slapped the woman on the face. Bad. Don't make fun of Ani Chan. She pouted, her hand ready to give a good slapping if she said anything again. The lady recovered as her face turned to that of rage. Don't defend him. He is weak. He might be earned your respect but not mine. She shouted, and Naruto could be swore he saw fire come out of her mouth. The little girl growled before tackling the older woman, sending the two careening off the platform into the abyss. Sounds of the little girl's screams paired with the older woman's indignant cries only served to make Naruto sweat drop. Underground facility. The woman was pacing back and forth under a dimly lit room as she pondered on her next course of action. Her mind was racing as she took in the results of a recently failed experiment. As she went back and forth, she clicked her tongue in disapproval before slamming her hands on the counter, shaking the beakers and test tubes that were sitting in wooden stands. Swiftly grabbing her purple rimmed glasses, she put them on as she tied her hair in a ponytail, her black hair hanging a little past her neck. A purple hairpin fastened a chunk of hair above her forehead as she grabbed a clipboard and scribbled some things in before the door opened, revealing a person in a white scientist coat. Ma am. The new specimen is ready. The scientist said curtly, getting a nod from the other woman. The door closed as the woman placed the clipboard on the table with a clack. She shook her head. This isn't going well. She thought, her eyes darting from the blackboard in the room and back to the notes on the clipboard. Sighing, she grabbed her coffee as she went to a dial in the room and turned it, the light dimming until it was pitch black. She wrenched open the door and slammed it shut, walking down a corridor before going into a larger room. She wore a light gray blouse that hugged her figure, doing little to hide her curves as it accentuated her bust and slim waist. Her own coat fluttered from the breeze as she ascended a metal walkway into a higher office. Next to it was a utility box fixated on the wall which she opened and grabbed a megaphone. Turning about face, she oversaw what was going on below. Dozens of other scientists crowded over different sections of the room, hunched over as their voices spoke rapidly to each other. The room was filled with scritches on blackboards and clinks of glass being placed or stirred. The woman started to move about the walkway that hung above the scientists, her heels making minute noises that slowly brought the attention of the other scientists. Seeing their break from work, she put the megaphone in front of her lips. Get back to work. She bellowed as the other scientists jumped at the sound and worked with twice as much effort. Seeing their efforts doubled, she went back to the office and consulted the computer in front of her before her hand went to her temple. Hami save me. She mumbled as she took a deep breath. After a few minutes, she pulled open a drawer and pulled out a mirror and placed it in front of her. Hami, my makeup smudged again. She said, before her pale hand reached for her pocket makeup kit and dabbed under her sharp yellow eyes. She turned her head left and right before smiling, showing her elongated fangs. All right, Orica. It is showtime. She said, the now identified snake san and parting her mouth a little to allow her long tongue to gyrate a little as she hissed before her assistant Kana opened the door. With her silver hair done up in a bun and her round spectacles resting on her face, she was about to say something before deadpanning. Orika-sama. You redoing that again? She said, tiredly as the Sanin quickly snapped her mouth shut, blushing from embarrassment. Auntie judge me. She cried, stamping her foot as Kana shook her head, amused. Hi, hi, Orika-sama. But, the specimen has arrived. She said, her face serious as all mirth drained from her expression. Orica did the same as she readjusted herself before following Kana out the door toward the room full of scientists. 
As she made her way past the scientists, they copied her expression, some even sweating a bit at the gravity of the situation. Kana and Orika approached a stage hidden in the back of the room as all of the scientists made their way toward it, sitting on grey folding chairs as their attention was directed at their superiors. The large red curtain concealed whatever had Orika's interest as Kana disappeared behind it. After a little while, the lights went out before a rustling of chains was heard. The curtain was pulled apart as a large spotlight illuminated the center of the stage, revealing Kana holding something rather dangerous. The scientists gasped as Orika smirked like a predator, eyeing the item before her. Kana's own body blocked the item of interest before moving out of the way to reveal. The life-size plush of a 12-year-old Naruto Uzumaki with a bashful expression, courtesy of Kana who spent a week stalker observing Naruto as he went about his daily activities, including when he slept, who she may or may not have filched a few orange jumpsuits to give to Orika. And she may or may not have her own life-size plushie who she dressed in the same jumpsuit and used as a body pillow to help her go to sleep, her room totally not filled with everything Naruto-related, ranging from a Naruto poster to a Naruto pencil which she currently had tucked behind her ear. The same could be said about Orika, but to the more extreme. Orika's breath became ragged as her face reddened, her hands shot outward in groping motions as she approached the bashful plush kun before she schooled her emotions, the vestiges of a blush still lingering after she noticed Kana's gaze. The heart-shaped device was wrapped around the plush, a large display taking the center portion of the device and a small lead on the top section. Kana shuffled out of the way, allowing her sensei ample room to work with as her eyes roamed to the scientists, quickly writing into their clipboards as their eyes never left the stage. Pressing a red button that was on the side of the device, the screen lit up as a boot logo of a chibi Naruto appeared, winking and giving a thumbs up. A jingle played before text appeared on the screen. Affectionately, it spelled out. Doki Doki Love Sama Confess Your Love and Get the Top Rank to Get a Prize with Your Loved One. Press the heart to get started. The text disappeared, only to be replaced with a HUD, one section detailing an affection meter in a shape of a heart, and a background of floating, smaller hearts with words like good luck. Or love. Dot. Nervous, Orica started to chew on her purple-colored nails, before turning around to the crowd of scientists, who just happened to be all female. WW what do I do, girls? Orica stuttered, eyes looking hopeful as she poked her index fingers together. This was an everyday occurrence at Orica's lab. Anyway, the scientists could only shrug before one in the back shouted just do your best. Dot this roused the other scientists as they encouraged Orica to just do it. Orica was stunned, her eyes widened as she slowly started to tear up. Everyone she thought, before shaking her head and turning her hand into a fist. With renewed vigor, she spun around and walked toward the plush Naruto, making the scientists go silent in anticipation. Orica tapped the heart on the display before it switched to numbers counting down. It chimed as the number started to decrease before a large display slowly dropped down from the ceiling. Orica felt something wash over her as she closed her eyes, a gust of wind tickling her skin before she opened her eyes again. She was briefly brought into awe as the scenery changed. Inside the simulation. Instead of a laboratory, she was instead in a park that was filled with sakura trees, the petals falling around her, and the sun set to the point where the sky was orange-pinkish. Green grass rolled around her as large buildings surrounded her position. What stuck out to her most was that she was inside what seemed like the front entrance to a school, a large clock tower with a bell in the center of the building. A breeze tickled her legs as she glanced down, taking in her change of attire. She was dressed in a navy blue skirt that just reached her knees and a white raiment, with a sort of white flap at the back with a blue design on it. The bow decorated her collar as her hair had now reached her lower back, about the height of her behind. Violins were playing a romantic tune, as if trying to set the mood before a deep voice called her name. Orica San. She spun around, her eyes settling on the person before her. She immediately blushed. But S. Naruto-kun. Her mind racing a mile a minute, a blush staining her cheeks as her eyes roamed over the body of a 24-year-old Naruto who had on an orange blazer with a spiral crest on his breast pocket, a white dress shirt with a black tie and black dress pants, and black dress shoes. He had a shoulder bag hanging off the side lazily as his sun-kissed hair seemed to shimmer from the sunset as his spikes danced lazily against the wind. His eyes showing concern as his mouth contorted to a small frown. Orica could only blush harder. So so handsome. Her mind squealed in joy, a chibi Orica dancing happily in her mindscape. I received your letter in my mailbox, Orica san Do you need help with homework or something of the other? Naruto said, rubbing his sleeved arm in the cold. Orica looked confused for a second. Homework. Would homework. She said, still a bit shell-shocked at Naruto's appearance. Naruto's face seemed to cool into a smirk as he chuckled, shaking his head. The homework I assigned you, remember? I am your math teacher after all. He said, his clear cerulean eyes striking into her yellow one. Naruto is a teacher. 
Would I be his student then? That would make him Naruto sensei. Orika's mind cold and he entertained the thought as steam dejected from her ears and her head as she fell backwards. Naruto jumped before rushing over to her as she landed into his arms. He shook her body as he brought her face closer to his. Orika san. Are you alright? Naruto called out as Orika slowly opened her eyes. Naruto sensei she mumbled before she realized the proximity of their faces and blushed. This. This is just like those books I read. A forbidden relationship between teacher and student. Kayashi screamed internally. Naruto's eyes shifted into deeper concern as he looked over her. Boy. Orika san. He said, now deeply concerned. However, his fears were dashed away as Orika started to squirm and he placed her back on her feet. He exhaled a breath of relief before smiling at Orika. I am glad you re right. Naruto said, making her heart flutter. If that s all, I'll start making my leave. Naruto turned around and started walking towards the school gate before Orika could say anything. Thinking quickly, she shouted. Um Naruto sensei. Orika called after him, running to him as he turned again. She panted as she stared deep into his eyes. With burning determination, she started to speak. The R reason why I called why you out was she said, getting Naruto's attention as he raised an eyebrow. Yes. He said, silently giving her the signal to continue. Ami's sake, this is harder than I thought. What am I saying, of course this is hard. Orika thought, before continuing. I, I like you, Naruto sensei. Orika spat out, her hands clasped together. She noticed Naruto's expression drop from concern to a stunned one. She continued to press. Ever since I've known you, sensei, I always liked you. Orika said in a low voice as her eyes diverted toward the ground. You made me smile when I was sad and you always comforted me when something went wrong, her voice started to tremble as her eyes started to tear up. Naruto's eyes were overcast by a shadow as his hair covered his eyes. And I can t get you out of my head. Every time when I go to sleep, my mind would drift to you and I would be so happy. Orika started to choke up but she didn't t let that stop her. She placed a hand over her chest, more so over her own heart. My heart won t stop beating, not even now. So please, Naruto sensei no Naruto kun. I love you. She finally hammered out, her thoughts racing a mile a minute. She bit her lower lip before her head shot up to meet Naruto's eyes. Please be my boyfriend, Naruto-kun. She said with conviction. Naruto could only hold the stunned expression, taking in Orika's face as tears flow freely down her cheeks. Orika never broke the gaze before Naruto started to chuckle, before bringing his right hand over to her cheek. He gazed lovingly at her as she gasped at the warm contact, his thumb running over her cheek. Orika I've been waiting for the longest. Naruto finally said. Orika gasped, her eyes shimmering. Do you mean? She silently begged for it to be true, and she wasn't too disappointed by the next few words that came from his mouth. Yes Orika. I love you too. He smiled before he brought his other hand on the middle of her back, bringing the two closer. Orika waited with baited as Naruto came closer, never breaking eye contact. Soon, the two were nose to nose, their lips mere centimeters from meeting. End simulation. Until the simulation ended. The display showed all of this as the scientists were crying, tissues clutched tightly in their hands as a few blew their noses. Even Kana had tears in her eyes as she dabbed her face. However, the same cold and TB said with Orika, who violently shot up and shouted. Kami damn it. I was so close. She cried, and I'm tears streaming down her face as her hand was made into a fist. Her attention was brought back to the Naruto plush with the device as a voice chimed in. Wow. Such love. Congratulations, Hebehime123, your affection levels are off the charts. You placed first in the rankings. The device beeped, and Orika whooped alongside her female associates. A hissing sound appeared near the belly of the plushie as a gold ball rolled out of the slot. Orika raised an eyebrow. Hana-chan, wasn't he this made out of fluff? Not machinery. A shine was casted over Kana's glasses, blocking her eyes. There is a lot you don't know about this plushie, Orika-sensei. She said ominously, which Orika hesitantly nodded. She grabbed the gold ball and read the text written in black marker to give this gold ball to the Street Lottery Committee in Kanoha for your free grand prize, a date with Naruto Uzumaki at the age of legality. Because why not? Without even a second's notice, Orika jumped off the stage and used an earth jutsu to make a pillar appear from under her, shooting up and out of the underground facility towards the surface. Kana sweat dropped at the ugly brown monstrosity before her. Welp. We got a pillar now. Even despite that we re-wanted missing Nin and we re in the land of rice. She said, before shooing away the other scientists to get back to work. Time skip, the event above happens during this time. The twelve-year-old Naruto Uzumaki hummed to himself a jaunty tune as he made his way towards the ninja academy. 
A lot has happened during the five years since meeting the fabled Yuzu Manifest System and the Shroud of Darkness. Including his powers, which Kagaya briefed him a while ago. Apparently, his eye abilities are locked for now, as he doesn't need to use them for any reason at the moment, being 12 and all. His light and dark abilities are still at his beck however, so for now he ll have to make do. Only four more years, until Kachan will be released. Naruto said, excitedly. He couldn't wait for his surrogate mother to come to the real world. His mind was brought out of it as he saw the three people he dreaded meeting the most. And Amikas is. During his pre-teen years, Naruto has been around the estate less and less until he finally couldn't handle it anymore and moved out. Much to his slight chagrin, no one in the estate seemed to notice as he was already sparse in their time as a family. Naruto moved in at a spanking new apartment complex that was built a few years ago at the top floor. It was fully furnished with a comfortable couch and nice TV with white decorated walls and wooden flooring. He had other rooms, like a few bed and bathrooms and other ones that took too long to describe in length. He only moved in however when he was 9 years old, playing at a jungle gym with Sasuke and Kiva. Flashback. The purple snake slithered up to Naruto with a purple envelope and a heart as acting seal, with the words to Naruto-kun, from Hibiheim and Sert Heart here. Cautiously, Naruto took the envelope, not before the snake nuzzled his hand before poofing away. Sasuke and Kiba mosi toward Naruto who opened the envelope. Inside was a small note and a gold ticket. You have been granted a penthouse suite by a secret admirer at the Shinobi sector in Konoha. Congratulations. In the corner was a childish drawing of a heart in purple crayon, along with directions to the complex. Naruto scratched his head, confused, since he wasn't a shinobi yet and the snake didn't he make it much better. Having nothing better to do, he shrugged as he decided to investigate, Sasuke and Kiba deciding to follow. A few moments later, Naruto was in an elevator going to the top floor of the complex, along with Sasuke and Kiba. The elevator stopped with a ping, and Naruto stepped out, moving towards the only door on the floor. A face scanner and a ticket reader was placed on the wall, and a mechanical lock barring entry to non-residents. Naruto fed the ticket into the machine as it took in Naruto's face. Sasuke and Kiba hung back, looking at the pottery and the red carpet, marveling at how soft it was as they laid on floor. The door opened and a pale hand quickly grabbed Naruto's small body, before closing again. Kiba and Sasuke could only angle their heads to see, before plopping down, the carpet too soft to move from. When Naruto no longer felt something pulling him, he quickly hopped on his feet to meet the pale face of Orika, who had a gleam in her eye. In less than a second, she pulled Naruto in and hugged the small body while rubbing her cheek against his. Deciding that she meant no harm, Naruto dropped his guard and gave into the ministrations of the Hibi Sanin if the large amount of snakes pulling furniture into different rooms was any indication. And for the whole day, the two just did things. Well, they played with each other, and when Naruto was hungry, Orika would whip something up and feed him like he was a toddler. She would also give him hugs whenever she had the chance and acted pretty much like a doting mother. Naruto was happy, and when it was time for Orika to go, Naruto's sad face tugged at her heartstrings. She almost wanted to drop everything and stay with Naruto forever, but her plans at Rice were too great at the moment. It didn't he help that Naruto called her his Nii-chan, nor did it help when it looked like she just kicked the everlasting life out of his puppy, as his larger eyes is watered up when she had her foot out the door. Giving one last hug that lasted for 10 minutes, and with every shred of her willpower, she gave Naruto a goodbye and promised she would visit him again when she had time. Naruto held her to that promise with a cute but loud exclamation of Dadabeo. Which made it a thousand times harder to leave. But alas, she had returned to Rice. Then flashback. Since then, Naruto has been getting occasional visits from the Snake Sanin, who also conveniently had no clue that she was a missing nin. Despite all the thanks he gave her, he couldn't live in the apartment quite yet, as his training and scrounging around to make a Ryo or two had keyed him busy. Not to mention, it was in the shinobi sector of town, and he only got lucky because the guard that was on duty had taken a lunch break before the second person could take his shift. Anywho, it was through his busy schedule that Naruto picked up many hobbies and skills, like gardening from the nice lady at the botanical gardens and the farmers in the outskirts of Konoha. Since he was still technically a civvy, he had a free pass. Naruto also learned a few instruments to keep himself entertained, such as the piano, guitar, drums, ukulele, bass, and just to annoy people, the triangle and the kazoo. Heading back at hand, the Namikazes, two were heading to the ninja academy to drop off their daughter Naomi. Acting hastily, he hid behind a tree and observed from a distance. As he continued to track their movements, Naruto saw a bulge in Kashina's belly, assuming she was pregnant again. As if on cue, Minato confirmed his suspicions. Then when our Musum is dropped off at the academy, I'll have to get the papers ready for our little girl, Na, Kushi-chan. Minato said, rubbing Kashina's belly. 
She slapped his arm, huffing before smiling and rubbing it as well. That is right. We re having you in a few months, and we ll have two daughters. She said, before stopping. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to get a new crib. Ooh, and a new bed for little Sayuki, and not to mention some toys, Kishina went off on a tangent about getting new things, while Minato nodded and wrote it down on a notepad. Nina, Ka-chan, Tu-chan. Are we gonna use the room next to mine? Naomi chimed in, getting her parents' attention. Sure, if you want, Na-chan. Minato said, before his eyebrows creased a bit. Didn't he someone live there before? He said slowly, trying to remember. Naomi and Kishina stopped and thought too, before shaking their heads. No, I don't think so, Kibito. Kishina said, scratching her scalp with a finger. Ah, I think it was a guest room anyway. People are always visiting after all, since you made the announcement of our second child. You even filled a few rooms with gifts. Minato said, laughing. Naomi and Kishina smiled and continued to walk towards the academy, not seeing a shaking blonde hair boy, clenching his fists as something wet stained the ground. Naruto, sulking, made his way to the academy. As he followed the dirt path, he deviated and went towards the back, before using chakra to stick to the walls and walk up the side, onto the roof. There, he was meted with his brothers and sisters, waiting patiently. Well, for most of them. Naruto dodged a shoe as an angry trio of girls launched themselves at him as soon as his feet touched the roof. He didn't he expect them to tackle him, seeing as he was near the edge of the roof, he was launched back and skidded on the floor before his head hit the door leading back into the building. Troublesome. Shikamaru said, observing with silent amusement. Chaoji and Sasuke didn't he paid any mind, as Chaoji was manning a grill, and Sasuke occasionally released a fire jutsu to keep it going. Hiba and Shino were nearby, as Shino skillfully used his kakechu to remove the fleas from Akamaru. Meanwhile, Naruto groaned as he blearily tried to open his eyes, seeing heads of blonde, pink and blue, matching the pouting faces that accompanied it. You're really late. Sakura said, getting off of Naruto as did Ino and Hinata. You owe me a shoe, Baka. Hinata said, narrowing her eyes to enforce the threat. Ino nodded, not really having any more to add. Naruto didn't he say anything, his eyes downcast and a little did. The trio stopped and looked at him in concern, before crouching next to him. What is wrong, Aniki? The guys stopped their activities as they slowly approached Naruto, the same concern in their eyes. Naruto sighed, before hugging the three girls tightly. The girls instantly returned the gesture, signaling that it was pretty serious as the brothers wrapped their arms around Naruto, in a group hug. After a good minute, they let go as Naruto explained what he happened on his way to the academy. The girls and guys were furious, save for Sasuke who was silently scowling and Shikamaru who had a disappointed look in his eyes at his nation's leader. Needless to say, they were about to raise hell, but Naruto stopped them, not wanting to cause a scene. Reluctant, but listening to their brother's words, they stopped before doing anything too rash. With a small smile, Naruto went to class. Naruto entered the classroom with his brothers and sisters and took a seat next to the window as his brothers and sisters sat on his side of the room. He noticed a few civilians and a few sons and daughters of ninja he knew wave at him. He smiled, waving back until the teacher entered the room. The tanned male Chuanin with a horizontal scar on his nose and black hair entered the room, accompanied by a white-haired female Chuanin, each with a clipboard. Hello, and welcome to Kanoha S Ninja Academy. This is orientation, so don't worry, you won't be here long. The man said. As you progress through the four-year program, we as your homeroom teachers the tanned male said, gesturing to the female. Will be your main instructors. Our goal is to help you get a leg up on the ninja program so that you may bring glory to Kanoha and serve as our line of defense against foreign threats. The male concluded strongly. A few kids nodded, impressed by his words before the white-haired female Kanoichi walked to the front. As my associate said, you are the people Kanoha will turn to in a time of crisis. She continued, walking up and down the aisles. Their duty is to protect civilians and Kanoha's livelihood. Do so with strength, but only with necessary force. Be tenacious, but also clear-minded. She walked back to the front of the class. My name is Manami Tauji, and my friend here is Aruka Yamino. We will instruct you from here on out. The now-identified Manami turned her head and nodded to Aruka, who switched places with her. He brought out a clipboard. I will now do roll call. Say present when you hear your name. Just as he was about to start, the sliding door slammed open to a panting girl. Sorry I am late, Iruka Nai. An orange hair girl has arrived. Naruto pretended not to notice Naomi's late arrival, or her voice for the matter as Aruka ruffled her hair, before shooing her off. She went to a seat on the same level as Naruto and sat down. Naruto sighed before turning towards the window. Barring that disruption, I will now begin roll call. Haruka began. As soon as the first name was called out, Naruto went into his mindscape. 
As time is different in the mindscape, a rate of an hour to a minute, Naruto had no problems tuning out the world. He opened his eyes as he saw his Kachan in all her glory. His Haim, in all of her eternal grace and beauty snoring as she laid next to him on the bed. He blinked, confused, before remembering that his soul body was 20 years old and his physical was 13. Shaking off the confusion, he summoned a clone and Kawarimiti with it. As the clone laid helpless, he decided to explore his mindscape, seeing as the only true boundary he got to was a few meters deep into the forest. So he started on his adventure. On the real world, Naruto was looking out the window, his head turned away from all means of communication, including from Naomi, surprisingly. But, for the wrong reasons, of course. She detested him. Outright, hatred. Her childhood hate for the blonde had manifested into something ugly, and he was all too wary of it, but not at the moment. Occasionally, Naomi would glare at Naruto's head and try to discreetly ruin his day, but to her shock, her jutsu would be countered by what seems to be a barrier. She growled before turning back towards her replacement brother, Naruka. Since 30 seconds had elapsed in that brief instance with Naomi, 30 minutes had tired Naruto out. As it turned out, the forest would truly be an endless forest until Naruto willed something to take its place, like an amusement park or a Raymond stand. Sighing, Naruto stretched before closing his eyes. He felt a windy sensation on his body and opened his eyes again to meet mismatched eyes of red and blue. Naruto blinked. On each one. The figure of a little girl launched herself at Naruto, sending him to the ground again, similarly to their initial encounter. Ah. Hitomi. Nai-san needs to breathe. Naruto struggled, trying and futilely to paw the overly affectionate child from killing him, who had a killer grip. As Hitomi tried to bury her face into Naruto's chest after not seeing him for so long, a slender, gloved hand grabbed the hem of her clothes and elegantly lifted her to the taller figure's face. You know, you should stop doing that from now on, before you kill Naruto-sama. The soft voice said, walking closer to reveal the tanned beauty with yellow blonde hair and a butler uniform. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief before smiling at the butler-made person. Thanks a bunch, Satsuna-chan. Naruto thanked before he was clocked in the head by the now named Satsuna. Bibi Baka. Don T think I did this for your sake. She blushed before huffing and turning her head as she crossed her arms. And Don T say my first name, you haven't T earned that right. Call me Yamamoto-san from now on. She finished until Hitomi decided to hug Naruto again, not so rough now. Nana, Ani-chan. You promised that you'd take me and Suna-chan to the real world. I don't tea like this place, the shrine is so blue. She pouted adorably, which Naruto laughed at her expression before hugging her, placing her in his lap. Why don't tea we go today? I'll be done with the orientation for academy in an hour or so, so why not? Naruto proposed as Hitomi cheered. Naruto looked at Satsuna and extended the same offer. So why not, Satsuna-chan? You, me and little Hitomi here Naruto received a light punch to his chest. On the town for the day. Satsuna blushed up a storm. WHWHWW what or why why you trying to peephole here, Baka? She stuttered. Naruto decided to continue to tease her, lifting Hitomi and putting her to the side. He walked up to her as she froze by the sudden proximity as he grabbed her slender hands. Naruto removed both gloves and placed them in his pockets to feel the smooth dainty tanned hands of the exotic beauty. She shivered in delight as he moved one hand to her cheek and looked her lovingly in the eyes. I want to spend the time with you, Satsuna-chan. She was too much in shock to properly reprimand him, so he continued. What is so bad with spending time with little Almi? He leaned close and his mouth moved to her ear. Na, Kibito, let us go out today. Our daughter wants us to. Naruto said, knowing what it did to her. Kibito, ddd daughter, what? Her mind was racing a mile a minute as spirals replaced her eyes, and her face was supported by both of her hands, a blush spreading across her tanned face. So see mom. Honey. Steam rose from her face. Darling. Her hands released her head as they hung limply. My wife. She couldn't take it anymore as she fell backwards as if fainting. Naruto caught her and eased her slowly to the ground, much to Hitomi's interest, wondering what her Ani-chan was doing. Naruto went in for the kill. As little as Satsuna was still conscious, Naruto brushed a stray blonde hair away from her face and kissed her cheek. My beloved. He kissed her forehead this time and she was out like a light. Naruto truly loved the butler maid, and her tsundere personality made it all the more appealing to tease her. He felt a tugging on his shirt. Ani-chan. Hitomi asked, tilting her head cutely. Naruto chuckled before scooping her into his arms and carried her like an airplane. Her giggles and screams of excitement filled the room as he slowly stopped, kissing her forehead. We ll spend the day today, precious Amado. He said, making her smile a megawatt grin. But first, I have to return to the real world and get a few things done, alright. 
Naruto noticed her downtrodden expression, but gave her a final hug. It won't be long, Hitomi. Wake up Satsuna-chan for the time being and tell her what is going to happen. Can you do that for me? With an um. From his surrogate sister, he bounced over to Satsuna and started to shake her to get her to wake up. Naruto shook his head, a smile staining his lips as he vanished from the mindscape. As Naruto slowly returned, he shook himself awake and smiled, although the transition from a 20-year-old to a 13-year-old left him woozy for a few seconds, going through reverse puberty felt like a pain and a half. Naomi Namek is Uzumaki. Hiruka said, looking at her. Hoi. She responded, smiling. Finally, Hiruka read the final name on the list, his eyes widened. Naruto Namek is Uzumaki he exclaimed, not knowing that the Hokage had another child, an older one at that. Most of the attention was turned to him as it was dead silent. Naruto rose his hand. Present. He said lazily, before looking out the window again. There was silence for a minute before Iruka broke the silence. W well then, that LL be all then. Iruka, still in disbelief. Minami too had a look of disbelief, but recovered faster than her compatriot. We LL now pass out these ID cards for you, so you LL be allowed admission into the building. Can T have a stranger waltz in here? She said, passing out their respectable IDs. Soon after, the bell rung and they were dismissed. As the kids started to shuffle out of the door, the Kanohan Ein exited the room in their own stylish way. Sasuke vanished in a fire shunshin, Chaoji and Sakura melted into the woodwork, Hinata and Kiba dived out of the window, Shikamaru walked into the shadows and disappeared, Ino and Shino disappeared in a scatter of flowers and insects, respectively, and Naruto vanished in a flash of light, stunning the remaining students who were unlucky in the light show. Naomi could only grit her teeth, missing her opportunity to get at Naruto. Naruto appeared at the park located near the academy, placed strategically for the ninjas to burn off their energy during recess or after school. It was sunset, as the orange color tainted the skies and clouds floated on by. There was another park on the other side of the school for civilians, but the ninja and civilian kids didn't take care for that. Standing in the middle of the sand lot, he looked around him and noticed that no one was there, not noticing Naomi who just walked out the door. Deeming it safe, albeit he probably should be been more discreet, he started to do an incantation. Okami, you who reign into Kamagahara, hear my call. My mind is thirsty, my soul is willful, and my heart is aching for companionship, as I wish to summon the two beings inside of me. Naruto said, as a beam of light shot down from above him. Naruto didn't he notice Naomi's eyes bugging out of her skull. Let my being be no longer lonely, as my heart is filled, my soul is happy and my mind is clear, I summon Yamamoto Satsuna, the willful sword of the Shinto Kamis, and Hitomi Akumu, the shroud of Yami, the dark shield that protects the world. I beg unto thee to release the two for all eternity. During the incantation, a black runic circle appeared under Naruto, as the beam of light and the dark rune met in neutrality, neither one overcoming the other. Soon, two vortexes appeared on either side of Naruto, and out stepped Hitomi and Satsuna. Although, they were shorter, as they were tied to their master, Satsuna being the same age as Naruto and Hitomi at a ripe age of eight. The beam slowly disappeared as the dark rune melted into the ground, and the vortexes closed itself. As soon as she stepped out, Hitomi rushed over to Naruto and started to jump in place. Nai-chan. Nai-chan Nai-chan Nai-chan. Hitomi was garbed in a yellow blouse and a small cream-colored hat with a band near the rim, where an adorable little flower was pinned against it. Naruto smiled as he picked her up and placed her on his shoulders. Naruto glanced over to Satsuna and smiled, as she was dressed in a dark blue dress with a white shirt underneath and long skirt that went to her ankles as well as some sandals. All in all, she looked like a civilian housewife, but with her dark skin and light hair, one could say different. I can't believe you dragged me out for this. She huffed, but silently enjoyed the sun. Naruto smiled and felt Hitomi tap his head. She is lying, Ani-chan. Hitomi whispered, making him chuckle. Since the Shroud of the Devil and the Yuzu Manifest system were created in tandem, their human personalities cold and hide emotions or lie from one another, so to be blunt, Hitomi acted as a lie detector against Satsuna. Naruto smiled and grabbed Satsuna's hand, startling her and blushing a bit as Naruto ran his thumb over the back of her hand. Now, let us be off. We have the night to ourselves. Naruto smiled beatifically, and with a hesitant nod, Satsuna and Naruto were off. Naruto felt Hitomi clamber off his shoulders and stepped in between them and grabbed the hands closest to her, smiling. Let us go, Nai-chan, Suna-ni-chan. She smiled. She started to use their hand as a type of swing, and not even Satsuna could resist her innocence, giggling into her free hand. Naruto chuckled, and the trio made their way into Kanoha proper, missing the stunned expression on Naomi's face. Ani-chan. She tested in her mouth. Her heart ached as she noticed the little girl clutching onto Naruto's hand, dismissing Satsuna for the moment. 
She didn't see the fact that her heart hurt when she looked, nor did she notice the frown that framed her face as she gazed at Naruto, laughing and having a good time. Ani-chan. She whispered until she felt a pair of arms whisk her away. Yusum. How was school? Kishina said, giving her a hug as Minato ruffled her hair. And what were you doing behind the tree Naomi? Ooh, do you already have a crush on someone? Minato teased before mentally squashing that thought bug with an iron fist. He ll be damned if someone dated her daughter at this age. Naomi blushed before shaking her head violently. Minato and Kishina laughed as Minato gave her a piggyback ride and followed Kishina into a hardware store for furniture for their next daughter. Naomi looked behind her, seeing the retreating form of her brother, and to her surprise, felt something wet on her face. I am crying. She thought as she brought a hand to her cheek. Sure enough, she was as she quickly used her sleeve to wipe it off. Just an average day in Kanoha. It was near dusk, as the orange and blue sky hung above them with a small stretch of pink in the middle, as Naruto returned to his luxury penthouse in the shinobi housing sector of Kanoha. Tsutsuna and Hitomi arrived a few minutes later, groceries in their hands as they set the bag down on the wood table. Hitomi had promptly ripped apart one, spilling out its contents of sweets and of the like, grabbed a handful, and made her way to the large couch and flip on the TV. Tsutsuna had put a majority of the things in the fridge before telling Naruto she had to take a bath before being kissed on the cheek again. With a blush, she quickly made her way towards the bathroom. Naruto sighed. Today was a long day, not to mention that he noticed Naomi peering at him from behind the tree in the park today at the last minute. It struck him as curious, but decided to drop it. He was tired, especially in the marketplace today when Hitomi basically drained the sweet shop dry of its confections. His wallet took a hit today, and he ll have to work overtime at Ichiraku S to make up the money. But, alas, he could never be mad at Hitomi. She was his precious Amado after all. After strategically placing everything in the fridge, Naruto sat next to Hitomi, who was now sporting a spaghetti strap dress with cute pink flowers with smiley faces on it. The minute she felt the change of shape on the couch, she scrambled onto Naruto's lap and laid her head against his chest, smiling cheekily up at him. Naruto smiled and rested his chin atop of her head while watching TV. Tsutsuna soon came out, wearing a white dress shirt that did her bust no justice, and short black jeans, showing her well-toned legs with an adorable set of white bunny slippers. Naruto could faintly hear a yes. From inside his head. Raising an eyebrow, Satsuna blushed before lightly slapping his forearm, sinking into the couch next to him, and flipped open a magazine. It was an average day for Naruto, and he was content. He stealthily slid his hand under Satsuna's as he rubbed his thumb over it, making her blush as she flipped the page in her magazine. She didn't t remove her hand. Instead, she tightened her grip, however minuscule it is, around Naruto's. Life was good. No sooner than five minutes, a knocking came from the door. Setting Hitomi aside, much to her protests, and releasing his hand from his butler, much to her silent protest, he made his way to the door. Peering through the peephole, he saw a raven-haired woman smiling, holding what looks like a leather shopping bag with the Ichiha crest, waving her free hand. Just a minute. He called out before punching out a few buttons on a pad. The face scanner quickly scanned the woman's face before there was a beep and the door opened. The Kodo paraded in and lifted both her arms in the air, exuding her presence to those present. Aheyo, Naruto-chan. Makoto said jovially, before wrapping Naruto in a firm hug. It didn't t-help that he was suffocating in her bust as he tried to pry the affectionate mother off his person. Makoto only tightened her grip as she pulled Naruto up to her eye level, nuzzling his cheek. No, Naruto-chan. I just love your struggle snuggle. She said happily. On the opposite side of the room, Hitomi whimpered at the loss of her Ani Chan, who looked like he was about to have a broken spine. Satsuna sent a small glare towards Makoto, biting her nail in a vicious vice, before schooling her features. Relax, remain calm. Neutral face, upright posture, cool and collected. She thought to herself, remembering what was drilled into her. She was a butler, and butlers were supposed to be the epitome of professionalism, the best of the. Ani Chan, why is that lady kissing Ani Chan's face? Hitomi asked, snapping her out of her thoughts. What? Who? she asked gonna get it. Satsuna was about to scramble off the couch before Naruto managed to squirm out of Makoto's grasp. Makoto back in, I am 12 years old now. I am a big boy now. Naruto said hotly as Makoto giggled into her hand. Gifufu, na, na, na chan. Ull always be my adorable little chibi. She said, ruffling the top of his head. Naruto could only pout and cross his arms, making Makoto squeal before hugging him again. His fox-like features made him look like a small kid, which he cursed on occasion since whenever he went to the Ichiha compound, Makoto would be there to greet him with a hug. It was only Makoto and Sasuke left in the Ichiha complex, save for a few other civilians and shinobi that managed to evade the Ichiha massacre. 
Fugaku had been slain in a brutal fashion when Asaki Achiha, the eldest child of Makoto and Fugaku, had purged the majority of the Achiha. Asaki had spared Makoto and Sasuke as an act of mercy, telling Sasuke to lie free before she vanished. The civilians and ninja that were spared were mainly envoys who weren't tea around when it happened, as they were in other villages to sell their wares or act as liaisons between the villages or were on vacation. When they returned, they were shocked to see the ghost town of the former mighty Achiha. Being the widow of the clan head, Makoto was elected as the current Achiha clan head, with Sasuke as the heir instead of Asaki, who was placed as a missing nin in the bingo books, listed as S rank. Through strenuous operations, they re slowly making recovery for their loss. However, it was soon discovered that a large amount of the slain Achiha had their eyes removed during the autopsy that sent the bureaucracy of Kanoha wanting her head, implying that she had taken the eyes. Makoto and Sasuke knew she wouldn't tea as she was crying openly when Asaki and the two met. Nonetheless, Naruto had been invited for dinner at the compound, courtesy of Makoto and Sasuke, who wanted to meet the little foxy Chan and the other who wanted to hang out with his bro, respectively. It struck Naruto as odd when he heard Asaki had done something so heinous. He remembered her that she would play with him when she was off duty from Anbu. Flashback. A six-year-old Naruto sat on a swing by himself on the Hokage Monument after dealing with his troublesome family. Minato and Kashina had taken Naomi out for a family outing today, as it was their birthday. In a typical fashion, he was alone as they didn't tea bother to tell him, or rather, they didn't tea want him there. Naruto idly swung his feet back and forth as he looked up at the starry night. The moon looked as illustrious as it did as always, as he pulled the collar of his yukata. It was a pale blue, with white lilies as a design. His sash was loosed a bit to allow the v-neck of his yukata to droop. Naruto continued to admire the night as the Kaiubi festival was happening down below when he felt a gust of wind. Shivering, Naruto pulled on his sash to keep himself warm before he felt a pair of warm hands on his small shoulders. The hand started to roam down towards his arm before rubbing them, making Naruto relax from the menstruations. He looked up and saw a pretty pale-skinned beauty, her hair pulled into a ponytail as her onyx eyes bore into his sapphire blue with a minute smile before her face reverted to a neutral expression. Hi, pretty Nichan. Naruto said, smiling at his newly acquired sister. She removed her hands and sat next to Naruto on the swing, sitting at an angle with her legs together to lean towards Naruto. What is your name? Asaki Achiha. What are you doing here, Namika's sama Asaki asked, watching Naruto grimace at her question. She thought she offended him, but he waved his hand. Auntie call me Namika's sama I don't like honorifics or my last name. Just call me Naruto. He said, before sighing, deflating into his swing seat. A small silence passed over them before Asaki spoke again. Okay Naruto-san. Why aren't you spending time with your family? She asked. Naruto's eyes darkened a bit. The family doesn't leave one of its members behind, nor do they neglect them. He said quietly. Asaki nodded minutely, confirming her suspicions. Often when she was at home, Makoto would go into a tirade about how Kashina wasn't taking care of little Naruto-chan. Before her attention was brought elsewhere. Before coming here, Asaki did a little spying on the Namika's family, seeing how Naruto was suspiciously absent. This only reinforced her already growing sympathy for the young blonde as she got off her swing. Naruto heard the creak of the chains from the swing before being lifted off his seat. Asaki sat down again, with Naruto in her lap, facing her. He curiously looked up at her with a frown before he felt Asaki run her fingers through his hair. Naruto was shocked, as all the Achiha he knew, save for Makoto and Sasuke, were stiff, upper-crust nobles. Quite frankly, he thought they all had sticks up their asses. However, he decided to add Asaki to the already small number of Ichiha who didn't tea as she rubbed his back and petted him. Relaxing, he leaned forward and rested his face against her abdomen. After a few minutes, he looked back up at Asaki, who met his gaze when she felt the weight of his head off of her chest. Thank you, Nichan. He whispered quietly. Asaki nodded slowly, studying his face before smiling. Her attention was diverted to the three whisker marks on both of his cheeks, curious if they were scars or tattoos. They always intrigued her as no one else had markings like that on their face and started to run her thumbs across his pudgy cheeks. Naruto froze, his back shooting up as he felt Asaki run her fingers across his cheeks. Try as he might, he couldn't move as he felt something well up from his throat. Asaki watched in rapt attention as a wide-eyed Naruto surprised her at his sudden lack of movement. She was about to stop before she heard it. The sound that would only spell doom and gloom for Naruto for the rest of the night. Naruto purred. And it only got louder as Asaki continued to brush his whisker marks. Naruto was apparently oblivious to the sounds he was making as his mind was turning into mush under the pleasure he was feeling. Asaki's own eyes widened as she gasped a little, her eyes getting a bit starry-eyed at the magnitude of Kawaii Naruto was outputting. 
On her inner Kawi scale, Naruto's purring was off the charts as she let out a very quiet squeak. Squee. She promptly tucked Naruto, a very still and complacent Naruto, who was trying to gather himself, and ran off with him under her arm, heading towards Anbu HQ. It was all girls' night at HQ, and she just had to bring her new toy. Shit. End. Makoto stopped ruffling Naruto's hair as she placed her bag on top of the kitchen counter. Na, na, Naruchan. I'll make you dinner today. Makoto said with a closed-eyed expression before noticing two foreign presences. Hitomi and Satsuna. She eyed critically at Hitomi, who whimpered and dove onto the couch at a fierce expression and then moved to Satsuna, who flinched. Naruchan, who are these two? She said, her gaze lingering more on Satsuna before turning to Naruto, who laughed sheepishly. Naruto made his way around the couch, grabbing Hitomi and Satsuna by the hands to properly introduce them to Mikoto. This is Hitomi, my new Amado, Naruto gestured at the shy girl, who hid behind Naruto's leg, occasionally peeking from behind. And this is Satsuna, my butler. He gave Satsuna a curious expression before she coughed into her hand. My name is Yamamoto Satsuna, Naruto-sama's butler, Mikoto-sama. She said professionally, bowing deeply before raising her head again. Mikoto raised an eyebrow. Oh, a new sister and a butler, Naruto. She said. Naruto noticed the lack of honorific and the use of his full name, showing how serious this was. Naruto nodded. Very really sentient objects, but they took on a human form. He said, noticing the look of surprise on Satsuna and Hitomi further sinking behind his leg. Mikoto adopted a suspicious expression before sighing. Well, alright I guess. She said astutely. But Naruchan, you have to tell me this earlier. Mo. She whined like a child, stamping her foot. Naruto chuckled nervously. Sorry, Bachan. It slipped my mind. I didn't even know you were coming over either, so I wasn't prepared. He said, rubbing the back of his head. It's okay, Naruchan. I can't stay mad at you for long. She said, pinching his cheek. She let go, noticing his pained expression before shooing them away. Now, Shu. I need to make you dinner. She said, as the three slinked back onto the couch. Where's Sasuke? Is he alright? Naruto asked from behind the couch, his attention glued to a documentary on how Raymond was made as Hitomi and Satsuna peeked from the top, looking warily at the Ichiha matriarch. Oh, he is fine. He is spending the next few nights at the Haruno S. She said, her eyes undrawn from chopping ingredients. The rest of the night was silent, as the chopping of ingredients and sizzling of the pan was drowned out by the low hum of the hood atop the oven and the TV. Is it a good idea to tell her what we really are? Satsuna whispered, drawing Naruto's attention away from the TV. He saw her and Hitomi's worried expression before he must their hair. Ma, ma, it's fine. You can rely on her to keep a secret. He said, as the two females sighed. She is Koi, Ani-chan. Hitomi whimpered adorably, before Naruto laid her across his lap. He tickled her tummy as she giggled uncontrollably. Now now, turn that frown upside down, Imado. Naruto said with a smile. With a pout, Hitomi removed herself from his lap and laid her head against his side. He then turned to Satsuna and with a predatory grin, pulled her head onto his lap. Confused at the sudden interaction, her eyes went to Naruto's face, who with a smile, ran his hand through her hair. She was about to retort before Naruto placed a finger on his lips with a silent shh she relented and rested on his lap as he continued to play with her hair. After a while Mikoto called them to dinner before Naruto had excused himself to wash his hands. Hitomi and Satsuna went to follow, before Satsuna felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned around to face Mikoto with a hard expression, as Naruto and Hitomi disappeared into the bathroom and shut the door. Now, listen here and listen well. I know Naruto loves you and the other chibi dearly, Satsuna blushed at the word love, despite having an indignant expression. But understand that if you hurt him, I will have your head. You probably know what he has been through, but understand this. Mikoto went closer as Satsuna walked backwards, before her back hit the wall. With a thump, Mikoto's arm shot out and struck next to her ear, earning her full attention as her eyes projected fear. I have a very particular set of skills, skills I have acquired over a very long career in Anbu. Skills that make a potential nightmare for people like you. Mikoto's hair started to cover her face, leaving only her eyes visible. A black miasmic aura started to radiate off her being, spelling death should you cross her. If you treat Naruto well, that LL be the end of this talk. I want to bother you, I want to confront you. But if you don tea, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. To end her point, her eyes glowed blood red as her Sharingan spun furiously, promising sudden death. Tsutsuna could only nod quickly, hoping that appeasing the demon in front of her will make it go away. Just as quickly, Mikoto reverted back to her normal appearance, as it never happened at all. Good. 
We re on the same page then, I am glad to hear it. She said happily, before returning to the kitchen to plate up the food she cooked. Satsuna slowly slumped to the floor, her head down as the bathroom door opened. Your turn, Suna-chan. Naruto said as Hitomi followed him. Hitomi s right. She is scary. Was all that was going through Satsuna's mind as she proceeded into the bathroom. After dinner, Naruto said he had to do something as he bid Satsuna and Hitomi goodbye, as well as Makoto, who made her intentions apparent when she said she'd be staying over until Sasuke returned to the compound. Naruto changed his attire to a blank white shirt and faded blue jeans, while wearing a black hoodie and sneakers made by Shy Nike. Their slogan just kill it. Had always amused Naruto. Naruto started running up the wall with his chakra before jumping over the rooftops of various buildings, sometimes alternating to tree branches if there was no more building to jump over. Eventually, he reached his destination, having always visited every two months. Anamika's household. He sighed as he went to the base of the build his former family. Naruto met their gazes before exhaling slowly. Well, shit. Earlier. Inner s ready. Kishina shouted aloud as she finished adding some garnish to the ramen she was making. Three large pot cylindrical pots were occupying the stove as she ladled some noodles, pouring it over with some broth and topping it off with some meat and vegetables. Three minutes later, Minato came clunking down the stairs while Naomi practically bowled him over, shoving him hard against the railing that he fell through the gaps. Kishina tried to hold her laughter as Minato struggled to stand back up as Naomi was already stuffing her face of the delicious noodles. Soon, the three were dining and talking animately about their day. So, Mina-kun. Anything interesting happened today? Kishina inquired as she drank the broth and stood to refill her bowl. Minato sighed. The usual things, Kushi-chan. Paperwork, assigning team missions, paperwork, sending out letters to other nations, a council meeting and paperwork. Minato said cheekily. Kishina rolled her eyes. Well, you better clear up a few days for me, we re going baby shopping. Kashina cheered. Minato raised an eyebrow. For what? His response was met with a ladle to the head as he clenched the spot Kashina hit. For the baby of course, Baka. Kashina frowned. Minato rubbed his head sheepishly. Ah, Goman Goman. I thought you'd forget. It was already a nightmare trying to get new things for little Naomi here. She was quite the spitfire back then, ain't he that right Naomi? He ruffled her hair. Naomi pouted as Minato messed with her hair. She still is. Oh. Have you found a boy to crush on yet? Kishina teased, making Naomi blush. Minato gasped. Kishina. I'll be damned if some little runt takes my only child away. Minato emphasized by slamming his fist on the table, making Kishina's bowl splash some ramen and broth on her clothes. Her eyebrow twitched. Naomi flinched, but Kishina and Minato didn't he notice. Well, that one t be the case in a few months now, won't he it? We have baby number two coming along soon. Kishina patted her bulging belly. Little Haruka here is gonna be stirring up trouble in three months, Tebane. Minato smiled wistfully as he got up and embraced Kishina from behind, kissing her cheek as his hands patted her belly. I bet she ll have your little verbal tick too. Minato laughed. Kishina reddened in embarrassment. You better not have jinxed it, team. I tried hard to hide it. Dadabane. Kishina mumbled the last part, much to Minato's secret amusement. However, Kishina saw and her chakra chain started to dance behind her. Quickly, Minato bolted from the kitchen. At back here, Minato. Kishina gave chase, leaving Naomi alone in the kitchen, as bangs and girlish screams echoed from the house. She sighed. On each hand Naomi whispered, making circles with her finger on the table, looking sad. After a brief stint of silence, Kishina dragged Minato back into the kitchen by the collar as he stretched his arms to Naomi. Naomi-chan. Help to Chan. Help. He cried before Kishina bopped him again with a ladle. To their surprise, Naomi stayed silent before getting up from her seat and going upstairs. The couple paused as they looked at each other before untangling themselves and followed Naomi. Naomi reached the top floor as she walked past her bedroom door, going to the end of the hall. Kishina and Minato followed, looking uneasy as this was something new for how Naomi was acting. Reaching a window, she turned to face the door which she knew used to be Naruto's. It was a blank door, looking similar to all the other guest rooms. Bracing herself, she grabbed the knob and noticed how stiff it was. She tried to turn it, but it won't budge. A seal made itself visible on the doorknob and the door itself, much to her surprise. Minato came from behind, inspecting the seals. The lockout seal and an event seal. Minato remarked as Naomi turned around. What do those seals do, Tu chan Naomi asked as Kashina bumped in to explain. Well Naomi, a lockout seal is a seal that is designed to prevent intruders from entering a certain area. Kashina pointed to the doorknob. In this instance, the door is prevented from opening by normal means. She moved her eyes to the event seal. 
an event seal however, is something that triggers something to happen if the door was ever compromised. Kashina narrowed her eyes as she studied the seal. It was very intricate. In this case, Minato must be made this for something, but forgot about it. Kashina shook her head. What a dummy. Ah uh, Kashina. I didn't he make those seals. Minato said, making Kashina frown. If you didn't he, then who? You and me sure didn't he, and Naomi is just starting her fuinjutsu. Was it an intruder? Before either one could say anything, Naomi raised her leg push chakra into her kick as the door exploded into splinters. The room was dark, save for the beam of light that came from the window, shining onto the bed. The blanket was gray as the pillow was covered in dust. The second the trio set a single foot in the house, they were being led by an invisible force toward the wall adjacent the door. Wh what s going on? Naomi panicked, trying to regain control by squirming. I don't know, and I don't like it. Kashina was just behind Naomi, her arms flailing as her feet didn't respond to her call. I'll try to Horatian out shit. A barrier. It disabled by seals, but how? Minato struggled, but the trio soon stopped at the center of the back wall. A resounding crack lit up a light source on the wall behind them as it shone on a sketch. Through the use of seals working behind the scenes, it made the sketch large enough to see clearly. Is that us? Minato said as he looked at the crude drawing. It was done in crayon as it showed a blonde-haired stick figure, a red-haired one and a smaller orange-haired one propped on one side of the paper. The backdrop featured grassy zigzags on the bottom, symbolizing grass and an obnoxious yellow sun in a corner, with a smiley face inside it. The three didn't he understand until something shimmered on the other side. While the caricature of the three had smiley faces, a short blonde stick figure had a sad smile on it. Wh what does this mean, Minato Koi? I am scared. Kishina uncharacteristically remarked. Being the red hot habanero, scared wasn't he in her dictionary until today. Minato could only offer silence while Naomi waited with bated breath. The next sketch was of a wooden house, barely discernible as the sketch was drawn in slightly better quality. The same red blonde orange stick figures were outside of the house, but the other blonde figure was looking out of what seems to be a window. They had the same faces as the first sketch. The sketches kept getting better as the drawing switched from crayon to color pencil, then to pencil to soft charcoal. Likewise, the quality improved in each drawing as more lights illuminated, each sketch depicting the Namika's family and the mystery boy. In the sketches with pencil and soft charcoal, the sketches had accurately resembled the family, but the mystery boy always had his head and eyes shaded out, only showing the bottom half of the face. The lips were set in an eternal frown and in some, what looked to be streams of tears. The sketches also had odd numbers in a blank corner of each one. 7, 4, 5, 9, 8, 11. There were several repeats of the numbers from 4 through 11, with a few repeats of 12s. Wait that s the time Naomi and I went to the park, and that s the time you and Naomi went to the Kaiubi festival, I couldn't go because of hookage duties, but Minato trailed off, Kishina nodding as she remembered those moments well. They soon realized that the sketches were depicting their moments in history. As soon as I find the creep stalking our family, I'll beat the tar out of him. Kishina and Minato shared the same sentiment. It soon became odd when it transitioned to what seemed like the boy playing with a rabbit. With a crown. These sketches were drawn in soft charcoal, in high-grade material as it started from the number 6 this time. Each drawing had shown the boy smiling, albeit his top half of his head were still shadowed. The bunny seemed to at first to evade the boy in the first few paintings, however it soon gradually stopped running before gradual acceptance in the latest few. It was a few seconds before a large circular light shone from the ceiling. It looked like the moon. The trio's eyes were drawn from the apparent moonlight towards the wood floor, where a large drawing was illuminated. It stretched the whole floor, save for the space the bed, desk and shelf were occupying. This sketch however, was colored in. On the right side, shone a beautiful pale woman with small, noble-esque eyebrows. She had two horns and long, silver hair, and was dressed in a maiko garb. Magatama decorated the collar and cuffs of the priestess garb, as her face was turned to the left, smiling affectionately. She had a faint blush, and a crown of grand design hovering above her head. Her right hand was grasping the figure's left hand. The boy seemed to meet the same height of the beauty, dressed in expensive, high-quality clothing. However, like prior, his upper half of his face had been shadowed, but the lower half was smiling toothily, and a faint blush was visible as well. On top of where his head would be, a crown was there as well, but it was of even grander design, signifying the higher position of the two. The number in the corner was 13. What does this mean? Kashina whispered. Her head was racked with thought, as was Minato's. They didn't he notice the wide, misty-eyed expression Naomi had. As if answering, the light snapped shut as they heard a flipping motion. Then, the moonlight shone on the center image. It read. Naruto. Suddenly, Minato and Kishina were assaulted with memories. Of their estranged son. 
their eyes widened astronomically as they came to a sparking realization. No 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 Kashina collapsed on her knees as Minato's face was stricken with horror as he collapsed and started to backpedal. As they did this, each light shone again on all the previous drawings as Naruto's name appeared in the same messy font as if done by a paintbrush splattering on a canvas. The sketches flipped over again, except the shadowed part of the boy revealed the full face of Naruto. It stung the three, especially the ones that looked like Naruto was crying, and it got progressively worse as Naruto's sketches improved since they captured more detail of his anguish. The final sketch of the woman and Naruto smiling made their heartstrings twinge before each sketch faded into nothingness. The three were silent, save for their sobs before a clunking sound came from the window. Their eyes widened when the window was pushed up and a foot landed on the windowsill. A body followed the foot, as did a blonde mop of hair. The person looked up for a few seconds before exhaling loudly and muttered something. Well, shit. Amic. The girls were talking about how their day went in the Anbu HQ. Strictly speaking, the women of Anbu had this certain HQ locked in for their girls' night out. The male Anbu were relocated, as for their own safety, since angry women spelled certain doom for anyone who came at an inopportune time. Especially when it was that time of month for some. Ugh I swear, Yuda and Rika should get together already. Yuga exclaimed. Her lower half of her body was underneath a low-rise table, where there was thick fluffy material hanging from the already short table, as a plate of snacks covered every inch of the table. Very so cute. Especially Rika, with the eye patch. Anko shared her sentiment as she sat adjacent of Yugao. She rested on her side as a pillow supported her elbow, supporting her head as she watched a large television. Maybe I should get one. The FFT, Don TB Ridiculous Anko. I remember when we were kids. You were a Junibu too. When you came to class dressed in a black ninja outfit and said that you were, and I quote, beware, peasants. Mystic Shadow Nin, Midarashi Anko shall protect from the shadows. Because you thought the Anbu before were cool. I cold and T stop laughing. Yuugao remarked, snickering when Anko blushed before kicking Yuugao from under the table. Yuurasai. That was only a year in school. She blushed in embarrassment. Ma, ma. It's okay Anko. I thought it was adorable. Kamiko Natashi comforted Anko, rubbing her back in silent support as she smiled. She had a braided hairstyle with innocent eyes and a pale face. Ha. That was the funniest shit I've seen all year that time. You had a red scarf wrapped around your mouth and everything. Aika Sutando laughed, nudging Yuugao with her elbow. She had a tan complexion, with sharp eyes and pouty lips. Anko was about to unleash hell when the door suddenly slammed open. The four Anbu snapped to defensive positions when Asaki stormed in, closing the door with her foot with Naruto in tow. He had fallen asleep at some point. What s up, Asaki? Why do you look like you v found Kanoha s8 wonder of the world? Yuugao asked, her eyes drifting to Naruto's sleeping form. And who s the runt? The S Yandame Sama S son, Naruto. Asaki said, while laying him in her lap. Huh. He looks like a cutie. Anko remarked offhandedly. Why is Naruto here then? Aika gasped. Asaki. You didn't T-kidnap him, right? She said with a faux shocked expression. Asaki san. I expected better. Stealing a little boy, look at how innocent he is. Kumiko crinkled her eyebrows, her eyes showing disapproval as she frowned. No, I didn't T-kidnap Naruto. Watch. Asaki said loudly, before SHHing the men motioning them closer with her hand. Raising eyebrows, the four leaned in as Asaki maneuvered her index fingers to Naruto's cheeks. Look. Do you see these markings? They look like whiskers, right? Asaki said giddily. The four raised an eyebrow before look at each other, nodding slowly. When I rub them, he purrs. Asaki said, her eyes gleaming as she slowly moved her thumbs over Naruto's whisker marks. Her eyes sparkled as they touched his cheeks, and she started to brush them horizontally. What a crock of sh weight, what? Aika was about to call Asaki out before she heard a guttural noise from the top. The es actually purring. The Fu Anko was about to finish before Yugao shoved her hand in Anko's mouth, her eyes never leaving Naruto. He continued to purr, much to the 5s delight. Isn't he adorable? Asaki said as the other four Anbu crowded around Naruto watching with fascination. However, Naruto only amplified that feeling when he turned around, making grabby motions with his hands. His hands landed on Asaki's clothes and he pulled himself in, snuggling to them as his legs kip up into his belly and his hands bent like a fox. All of the Anbu, save for Asaki, squeaked in delight as their kawaii meters shot out of the roof. The Asanko started. So Kumiko with the assist. Amika with the pass. Yuuut. Yuugao with the slam dunk. The other three joined in the shout as they poured over Naruto. Look, look. He's waking up. SHH. 
Isaki harshly whispered as Naruto started to stir. He looked up, meeting five pairs of eyes as he blearily made out the faces. So many pretty Nichans Munya Naruto sleepily said as he smiled, going back to burying himself into Isaki's soft clothes. There was dead silence before the group broke out in whispers. Isaki I think you really have found Konoha's 8 world wonder. No. Konoha's greatest world wonder. Anko said, her eyes wide. Weaponize cuteness. Yuga said, her eyes sparkled. That s that s dangerous, Asaki. It made me break character. Aika replied, her hand over her face as her eyes as shook in their sockets, shocked by the effect the little runt had. The s just like a fox. Kamiko gushed, bringing the whispers to a dead halt. Just as sudden, Yuga dived out the window and ran, heading towards the marketplace. The other four didn't he notice as they were entrapped in Naruto's purring before Yuga came back five minutes later. With a plastic bag. Girls. I think I may have the weakness to women in my hands. Yuga said ominously as she kneeled with the bag. What, as if he wasn't he already? Aika asked, too engulfed at Naruto. Here, watch, Yuga set the bag down before opening it. DJs. Anko said as she grabbed a panda one out of the bag. Asaki was too busy being a mother hen at the moment. Full body animal PJs. They were available at a flash sale at the festival today. Yuga fished out a certain orange one, which drew the other four Anbu's attention due to its bright color. Yuga smirked deviously before unfolding it, revealing a fox PJ. It had the pointy ears on top and nine tails at the bottom, a hole for the face and a zipper on the side of it. Asaki quickly snatched it, boring her eyes into each of the four, her sharingan spinning. This this is truly the greatest thing to come to Konoha. Asaki said wisely, the other four nodding sagely. We must use this at once. Asaki said, before the five started to fantasize at the imagery. Quickly, the five had nosebleeds. Ten minutes later. Armed with a video camera, tissues and other items, the five Anbu returned to a sleeping Naruto. Earlier, the five had cleared out a room of its furniture, having prepared the room that covered the floor and mattresses. The five were dressed in their nightwear, each sporting some pretty racy lingerie as they came to retrieve Naruto. Carefully treating him like glass, they diligently made their way to the room and set him softly in the middle. The bag of pajamas sat in a corner, as did a large bag of snacks. A TV stretched the wall as the five sat around him in a circle, giggling. This this is the best night ever. Yuga pipped, much to her support of her fellow Anbu. Quickly, the five stripped Naruto to his boxers, blushing slightly as they thought of how much a bad time this LLB if someone were to see five ravenous young women stripping an adolescent. Shaking it off, Kamiko unzipped the fox pajama before Aika had put Naruto into it. Successfully putting Naruto's arms and legs in, as well as his face without waking him up, was an achievement in itself, as Asaki zipped the zipper. The five stared in awe as fox Naruto lay to sleep, curled on the soft Kashiani mattress. All the while, being videotaped. The five were now debating who gets to pet him. Picking straws, the order was decided as Aika, Anko. Kumiko, Yuigao and Asaki, much to her dismay, and before they could break, Naruto started to stir. The five froze as Naruto sat upright, rubbing his eyes from the crust sleepily, as to their infinite fascination, the fox ears on the pajama seemed to twitch, and the nine fox tails dance, as if they had a mind of their own. How how does he do that? Kumiko whispered, but didn't he get a response? The five s cuteness meters were already blowing up. MMN Naruto mumbled as he saw five young women look at him adoringly. The video camera was left forgotten as it recorded every interaction. Who are you? Are you my new pretty knee chance? Naruto said. Hearing his voice amplified the drunk on cuteness expression the girls had on as they approached. The Awaika said, much to the shock of her colleagues. The cold-hearted, tough-as-nails Aika reduced to this the other four thought as Aika pawed her way to Naruto and picked him up. She smiled gleefully as the now fully awake Naruto looked in confusion at the lady. Ano oh, nice to meet you, Nichan. I am Naruto, what is your name? Naruto said, complete with head tilt. Aika squealed and pressed Naruto into her already large cleavage as she hopped in joy. Can we keep him? Can we? Can we Aika asked excitedly. It was decided then and there that Naruto was the mascot of female Anbu everywhere. Everywhere. The night was then filled with debauchery as the five girls drowned themselves in eternal bliss. Naruto was being manhandled by five women, each trying to earn his affection. Naruto eventually had been swapped through many animal costumes. Baby bear, panda, cat, dog, squid, which brought many shivers of insane sensual pleasure up their spines. And a plethora of other animals, doing each of their respective sounds. The camera got a good amount of solo shots of Naruto being babied and being cute, and before they knew it, the five were tuckered out. So was Naruto, who was back in his fox outfit because it was too cute to not put back on. 
Naruto started to get sleepy again, and as he started to go to sleep on the mattresses that were strewn about, the five ladies positioned themselves around Naruto. Anko and Aika had claimed his arms whilst Kumiko and Yuigao snuggled into his legs. Asaki had the honor of acting as his bet as she was underneath Naruto. The five simultaneously giggled perversely, and the night was over. The next day, Naruto woke up back at his apartment penthouse in his usual clothes and decided to wash up, wondering if yesterday was a dream. That was quickly dashed away when he went to the hamper to switch his clothes when he noticed a black anbu mark on his arm and what appears to be a seal inside the tattoo. Using his chakra, Naruto made the seal release what it held and out came a picture. It was Naruto, sleeping in his fox costume as Aika, Anko, Kumiko, Asaki and Yugao smiled into the camera with peace signs. It was embroidered with hearts and teddy bears and on the back, it read. Door adorable Atado, always welcome to the female quarters of Anbu. There were five kiss marks on the back. Naruto smiled and framed the picture and resealed it back into his arm. Just a typical night in Konoha. Naruto grumbled as he laid on his bed. The sun was shining brightly through the draped window where small beams of light managed to slip by the cracks and shine on his face. Yesterday was pretty hectic night, even for him. A lot of drama and emotional words were exchanged, but things were settled. For now, at least. As yesterday night's events assaulted Naruto's memory, he sighed and ran his hand across his face before propping his head. Fuck me. After sitting, bleary-eyed on the bed, he rubbed the crust out of his eyes and swung his legs from out of the tangled mess of his bed sheets and headed towards the bathroom. Upon entering, he noticed the rings around his droopy eyes as he sighed. Given, things stretched well into the night to the point where the sky started to get lighter, Naruto drank in the time he had. Which wasn't too much. Thank Kami Minato had rescheduled the start of the academy to the start of the afternoon and an early dismissal at 3 p.m. An extended orientation, so he says. Slowly, his arms rose as he leaned over the sink, turning on the faucet to wash his face. After patting down with a towel, he started to brush his teeth before someone had knocked on the door. Neri-chan, are you alright? It was Mikoto. She had stayed the night. Yeah, I am fine. Naruto curtly replied before he spat the toothpaste out and rinsed with cold water. Refreshing. At s noon, why rent you at the academy yet? I made you lunch too. She said from the door. Minato had to change the time for today, so the other students who were in tea there for the first orientation can get a crash course today. Naruto said, a half-truth. He didn't he want her to bring up the topic of his parents so early in the morning, as her tirades tended to last for well over the needed time. Well alright then. When you come out, make sure to eat the lunch I made for you alright. I have some errands to do and I'll be back before nightfall. See you later, Nero-chan. Mikoto's voice faded before a door slammed shut. Sighing, Naruto changed his wardrobe before leaving the bathroom, hunkering down over the curry rice Mikoto had pleasantly made for him. It made him smile. You 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 you, Naruto. Only I am allowed to feed you. Ah, the rabbit goddess has awoken, I see. Naruto said. With a poof, a featureless shadow clone appeared next to Naruto before tendrils of whitish gray pierced the clone, before taking the shape of a busty woman with horns. Immediately, Kagaya had glomped Naruto off the chair, luckily having put the fork down during that instant. It would be a shame if he was injured by a kitchen utensil. H-A-A, H-A-A, this smell Kagaya breathed deep as Naruto tried to push her head away. His hands magically slipped away like oil as she pressed her face into the crook of his neck. The smell of my Sachi, my Naruto she breathed deep, getting drunk on his scent as Naruto could feel his already minuscule chin hair being cut down by her horns. Naruto had the sudden thought of the Asagi no Megami as a bull in an arena and he as a matador, waving around a red cloth as the woman charged and lodged herself onto the side of the arena. Naruto snorted, before his attention was drawn again to the hungry-looking Kagaya, their faces inches away. I need more, more of this smell. Kagaya demanded as her nose pressed painfully onto his. I can tea get enough. She snarled before she was met with a swift chop on the head. Settle down, Kachan. Naruto deadpanned as Kagaya crouched on the floor, massaging the lump that had grown in the middle of her horns. It really hurt. You 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 Sachi, why did you hit Kachan? She whimpered, giving him doe-like eyes. Well, as much as she could. She didn't tea have any pupils so really it just looked like she had tears in her eyes. Naruto shook his head as he massaged her scalp, making her purr as she playfully nuzzled into his hand. Again, he felt his already minuscule arm hair being reduced to near nothingness as her horns lice dangerously close to his skin. Why why Kagaya eventually let go, letting Naruto grunt as he tried to get back in his chair and eat his food. Are you relaxed now, Kachan? You do this every time. Naruto said in an annoyed tone, but there was a hint of playfulness in his words. But it is so intoxicating, Nachan. Kagaya responded before kissing his forehead, making him blush faintly. 
Okay, okay, fine. I got it. You can stop now. Stop. Naruto raised his voice as Kagaya had kept kissing him on the forehead. What turned to an affectionate gesture turned to something lewd as there was now a wet spot on his forehead. With a wink, she vanished in a poof, revealing the clock behind her. Oh shit. I got five minutes to get to the academy. In a mad dash, he shoveled the rest of Makoto S. Curry before blinking away in a white flash as chimes played on his exit. Naruto reappeared on the roof of the academy as the sound of chimes played on his appearance. Naruto blew a breath of relief as he wrenched open the door and made his way to his homeroom. He pulled the sliding door apart as he was greeted with a room full of chattering students, future shinobi in the making, as an overall jolly mood washed over him. Naruto moseyed on over to a window seat near the middle left of the room. Before any of his non-blood brothers and sisters could approach him and say hello, Iruka and Manami walked inside, getting their attention. Okay everybody, settle down. Iruka said loudly, but everyone ignored him. Eyes, be quiet. Iruka said a little louder, yet to no avail. Manami was snickering in the background. Reaching a boiling point, Iruka shouted. Everybody sit the hell down and shut the fuck up. Cute big-headed jutsu. Manami was openly laughing as the kids all rushed to find seats available in the room, leaving an empty seat next to Naruto. Nana, Iruka-kun, you scream louder than me when we re-in bed. Manami said, smiling and making her eyebrows go up suggestively. Iruka blushed as he sputtered. And then Nami-chan, that s hardly appropriate at the moment. Iruka said, helpless. A few of the kids earned a blush too as Manami winked at Iruka. Taking a minute to gather his bearings, Iruka cleared his throat. Alright, I am starting roll call. Say here a present if you rehear. Iruka started as he looked at the attendance sheet. After it was said and done, it appeared that Naomi was the only one not present. Naruto mentally filed that away as he laid his head on his arms, resting on the table as he stared at the board. As you all know, Iruka started. The academy is geared toward making you shinobi hopefuls into the future of Konoha. Iruka gestured to a box next to the podium he was behind. As such, Hokage-sama had graciously supplied us with these handbooks to better your understanding on what the academy wants and gives to its future shinobi. Manami, who was leaning on the wall, had passed the books around to each of the students before sitting down on a chair. Now, if you turn to page 2. Naruto's thoughts decided to linger at this point, his interest all but lost. He idly remembered the empty seat next to him and the events that happened yesterday night. Flashback. Well, shit. Naruto said bluntly, snapping the three out of their trance. With his presence known, Kishina all but launched at her baby boy, effectively tackling Naruto and her out the window. The thought quickly passed by Naruto's mind as he felt the lack of support underneath him. Fuck my life. Kishina could care less, on the other hand. Minato and Naomi scrambled off their position on the floor to peer out the window when a small hand clamped tightly on the windowsill with a fierce grip. Looking down, Naruto was dangling from the window as Kishina balled into his small frame. At a grip, Kasan. You re gonna make me fall. He shouted as she sobbed louder. My son he s yelling at me. Why ah. Uh. She wailed, crying loudly into the night. Minato and Naruto briefly made eye contact before they sweat dropped. Naruto started to lose his grip as a finger slowly detached from the window when Minato and Naomi hauled both the mother and son from their disposition. Kishina still clutched at Naruto's body, like a mother hen protecting her young. Except, this hen was practically crushing her son's ribs as Naruto struggled to breathe. Auntie just stand there. Help. Naruto gasped out as he felt Kishina tighten up. Irk. After a fierce tug of war with Kishina threatening to rip the arms off of anyone who would take her Sachi away, the two finally detached the clingy mother from her estranged son. In a rebound, Kishina decided that if she cold tea have her Sachi, she ll settle for her Musume and latched onto Naomi instead, shoving her head into her bust as she whimpered, resting her head on top of Naomi's. Quite frankly, Naruto had matched Kishina to a red chihuahua before it was stashed away in the depths of his brain. Taking a breathe, he normalized his condition before readjusting his position and stood. He went for the door before glancing back. I'll be downstairs, until then, get yourselves in check before we talk. And the door slammed shut. After a few minutes, the fractured family were seated in the living room. Naruto sat in a chair facing the other three that were seated in a sofa. So, who wants to go first? Naruto asked, breaking the silence. It was thick as neither one made a noise, Minato was sweating, Naomi was looking downtrodden, and Kishina was busy blowing her nose and dabbing her eyes. She decided to go first. Nodo, my Sean. Kishina said as her words failed to work with her as she was crying, her voice filled with congestion. Naruto sweat dropped as she continued. I am showy dat we forget all about you. She said, blowing her nose. Minato rubbed his temples. Leave it to her to be tacked about a sore topic. Ishwash tea on porpoise, honest. 
she exclaimed, flinging a bit of mucus across the room. Gross. Naruto sighed, nodding minutely. I know, I understood that. Naruto said, making Kashina smile before blowing her nose. I've always known that Naomi took priority over me, she has the Kyubi inside of her, after all. Naruto said curtly. Naomi flinched, feeling slightly responsible for his situation. But you got to understand that being neglected for years will have a negative effect on me. Naruto said, making the three look at the floor in shame. I don't even want to mention the jabs you all gave to me when I was younger. Naruto said, disappointed. It is traumatizing for a kid to see their family gang up on them because of one reason or another. Naruto turned his gaze locked onto Kashina. I remember when you told me about your time as a child in Konoha, Kasan. You were called a tomato and didn't he have any parents to take care of you. Kashina's eyes welled up before Naruto locked onto Minato. Same with you, Tusan. You were orphaned and only caught a break when you and Kasan got together. Minato sniffed. Naruto then set his sights on Naomi, who fidgeted under his scrutiny. Well I actually have no comment about you. You didn't he know any better. Naruto said, waving her off, which quite frankly pissed her off a bit. Still, it hurts. Naruto said, putting a hand over his heart. I haven't he forgiven you. Naruto said, making their expression crestfallen. But Naruto said, offhandedly. There is always a chance to make up for it. He said, looking out the window. Ishina was about to jump before Minato forced her to sit back down. Grunting, Naruto rose from his chair. Show me your resolve. Show me your motivation and prove to me you deserve my forgiveness. Naruto laid down an ultimatum before vanishing in a bright light. But Naomi. Naomi was curled around her pillow as she laid on the bed, thinking about what happened. She felt her heart feel weird when she saw Naruto with those two other girls that one afternoon. Her heart ached when she saw him today, and the eye-opening epiphany when she saw witness to the spectacle in his room only drove the nail in that she missed him. She missed Naruto dearly. Feeling a pressure on her eyes, she buried her face into her pillow as she gripped it tightly, not wanting her parents to see if they were to come in. On each hand she thought, her mind going away into her mindscape as her throat felt dry. Inside her mindscape, the Kaiubi was shaking her head, feeling her container as sadness before devising a plan. Unbeknownst to Naomi, the Kaiubi was set on influencing her container by releasing chakra in a certain part of her brain in the meanwhile. I miss Ani Chan. Naomi thought sorrowfully. I am sorry for the things I said I am sorry that I hurt you, I am sorry, Ani Chan. She felt herself tear up more. Kaiubi decided it was time to crank up the chakra output on that certain area of Naomi's brain, seeing her vulnerable for the instant. I have to make it up it's my fault he was forgotten Naomi thought before she felt a small fire in her stomach. I'll earn on e Sama's forgiveness if it's the last thing I do. With a goal in mind, Naomi's eyes burned a small, yet fierce fire as she set out her plan. Kaiubi only snickered into its paw, seeing her gears of her plan start turning. I'll just keep putting small amount of my chakra into Naomi's brain center for love. We LL see how this pans out. Ha 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 ha. I need a hobby the Kaiubi thought as the night slowly turned into day. And flashback. Naruto was well asleep when a certain orange-haired girl walked in. Sorry, Haruka sensei Ka-san wanted me to finish breakfast before I left. She smiled before being waved off by Haruka. As she made her way up the steps, she spotted Naruto looking tired as heck, which she presumed was because of yesterday. She pulled the seat out, the scratching noise making Naruto open his eyes and notice her. He gave a weak wave. Hello Naruto said, drowsily. See mon, it is do or die Naomi. Act now and act swiftly. The Kaiubi goaded as she watched with bated breath. She didn't he pour her chakra into Naomi's brain for a little need and greet. Seeing her chance, Naomi, who still hasn't he taken her seat and obliviously to the fox's machinations, shook Naruto's sleepy body. Erg, what do you want? Do you have questions about what happened yesterday? He mumbled, yet still audible to everyone. He moved his upper body to sit straight up, straightening out his clothes. I thought we settled everything last night mmmmmmph. Naruto, whose sleepy disposition now changed to alertness as a set of lips met his. The remainder of the class that we weren't he watching were watching now with wide eyes as Naomi was kissing Naruto dead on the lips. And what the hell is that soft thing prodding his lips? Iruka dropped his handbook while Manami had a blush staining her face. She also had a small yet fairly obvious lecherous smile. Ahahaha <laughs> she giggled perversely in the background. Flick went the camera shutter as she stashed the camera and slipped the Polaroid into her breast pocket. Naomi continued to press her lips onto Naruto as she slowly descended into his lap, her eyes never leaving his wide cerulean ones. Meanwhile, the Kaiubi was pushing more of its chakra into her brain, all the while cackling at in her cage as her nine tails danced behind her. Naomi placed both of her arms around Naruto's neck as she pressed harder into her kiss. 
It s. It s too much. Naruto panicked as he was slowly being whittled away by the soft feeling on his lips. She tasted like strawberries and a bit of Raymond broth. His eyes started to droop a bit, the sweet sensation slowly overcoming his mind. Gagaya, being the ever-helpful mother goose, did nothing. Because she was asleep. Shit. Ani-sama Ani-sama. Ani-sama. Naomi on the other hand chanted his name in her mind, endless amounts of dopamine slowly filled her brain. If it were a bucket, it would be overflowing. Betting a little bold, she started to grind into his lap before he snapped back into consciousness and pushed her away. Naomi released Naruto as she slowly pulled away, a trail of saliva connecting their mouths. The UAAH. Naomi panted slightly as she licked her lips, loving the taste of Naruto's lips. The that s my resolve, Ani-sama. Naomi declared, blushing all the while Naruto looked bug-eyed at his little sister. I'll capture your heart if it s the last thing I do. She shouted, before sitting on the empty seat next to him and turning away with a huff. The class erupted in chatter, as the scandalous scene in front of them made send lightning bolts down Naruto's spine. Naruto's brain took a mental reboot as it promptly crashed, deleted all of its saved data, as Naruto's 1.184.937 was wiped from his head. Defeated, he slowly slumped down in his seat, burying his face in his arms. Naruto felt his peaceful life around him, crashing down like a million shards of glass. Fuck me. Naruto said, muffled into the table. The academy was amiss, as its usual calm, studious aura that was emitted turned to drama, as all the kids that were released back into the wild were chatting animately about what happened between Naomi and Naruto. Naomi was blushing atomically, a new shade of red as she hid under her desk when 3 p.m. arrived. Naruto had promptly dived out the window to avoid the masses. As such, we find our blonde sitting on a tire swing as it spun slowly in place. I can't rightly look at my little sister in the right way anymore, how the fuck did her resolve become earning my heart? Naruto was having a war in his brain, as Chibi Naruto's were attacking the images of Naomi kissing him earlier in a mad dash, yet they kept coming in endless numbers. Where the hell were they coming from? From the shadows, a horned woman giggled. It was too much for the Chibi Naruto's, as the images had surrounded them before attacking themselves, spawning Chibi Namis that glomped and kissed the everlasting life out of them. A burst of smoke erupted from the top of Naruto's head as he blushed, before shaking his head to rid himself of those thoughts. He idly drifted to the sensation on his lips, remembering their soft yet firm texture. That was my first kiss too he looked up to the sky, as if the clouds had the answers. He finally saw the appeal of looking at clouds were now, and mentally scheduled an appointment with Shikamaru to take a few hours to lay down and do nothing. In the Nara compound, a pineapple-haired male sneezed, startling him awake before smiling and went to his calendar and circled a Saturday before returning to sleep. Naruto sighed before letting go of his grip and fell face first into the dirt and stayed there. The grass smelled nice today. It was well after 5 p.m. as Naruto was dishing up some ramen. He applied at Ichiraku's when he noticed that they could use a hand, as Kashina and Minato would often come to eat here. And what better way to have your business boom than have your village s leader be a patron? Well, get a poop ton of money, but that s besides the point. As such, Naruto was hired on board along with a few others, as the shop was moved into a restaurant space and soon went from rent to ownership of the building. After business was so successful, a second floor was cleared for space, and the rest of the remaining floors were turned to one side civilian and one side shinobi housing. Pretty smart. Anyways, Naruto was garbed in a black t-shirt with a white bandana tied over his hair as an apron wrapped around his body. He was in the middle of placing some tonkatsu on some lemon-colored noodles and pork broth, layering a couple of slices on the side before adding some diced bamboo shoots, a spoonful of corn, and topping it off with thinly sliced nori, seaweed, as he slapped the small desk bell. One tonkatsu with bamboo shoots, up. He shouted from behind the counter as a civilian got up and nabbed the bowl, leaving the proper amount of ryo as she left. With a huff, Naruto exhaled, fanning himself with a paper fan as he observed the happy customers slurping up his creations, and still a great sense of pride. Boy, Naruto, how is the heat? A.M. asked from across the room as she placed a bowl of ramen onto a tray as a waiter took it upstairs. I tell you A.M., rush hour is absolutely ridiculous, but seeing the customers smile when they dive into it makes it all the more worth it. Naruto said with a smile. A.M. giggled into her hand before a few more customers came through the small hanging curtains. Welcome to Ichiraku Raymond, may I take your order? A.M., with her feminine wiles, made the men of the restaurant, save for Naruto, swoon as she took their orders. Sighing, Naruto shook his head at her antics as he turned around to tend to the broth, dropping in some chicken bones in the chicken broth when he heard the squeak of the stool behind him. Welcome to Ichiraku S., what LL be your choice of Raymond today? Naruto said, turning around to face the last person he wanted to see on Kami's green earth for the day. Hello, Ani-sama. 
A shy looking Naomi said, rubbing her arm as she blushed, looking half at the floor, half at Naruto. With a sharp intake of breath, Naruto's mind went into overdrive as sweat poured from his face, slowly sliding down his cheek and into his shirt. H hello Naomi. He said, nervously before Naomi gestured with her head outside. With a quick look, he saw A.M. nod at him before doing a shooing motion at him, and with her approval, went out and towards the back into an alleyway with Naomi trailing behind him. Huffing, Naruto looked at Naomi who found her toes very interesting. Alright Naomi, what s up? Naruto asked, sending her a questioning glance. He got a bad feeling about this. It s about earlier. In the academy when I she blushed, before making hand gestures. Why no? Naruto raised a hand, stopping her while nodding. I understand. It s about the kiss. Naruto finished, blushing faintly. Naomi nodded, as a minute or so passed. Naruto was starting to get curious. Why wasn't she talking? Um so what did you want to talk about the kiss? Naruto prodded, making Naruto blush a little harder. I liked it, Naomi muttered under her breath, as she unknowingly got off the side of the wall she was leaning on. Her mind was in a haze, and it was all due to a sneaky little fox. Naomi was fidgeting as she rose her head, her eyes matching his. Naruto was a little put off by her facial expression, if one could say, he felt a large amount of panic down his spine. I have no comment. Naruto said flatly, scratching the back of his head with a raised eyebrow. That only made the feeling in his spine increase, as if he had just committed a heinous crime and stepped on stage for a public hanging. Naomi had put on a face of what seems to be a rough interpretation of determination, as she took another step forward. The already narrow alleyway seemed narrower as the space between him and escape grew smaller, as she was approaching him at an angle. She took another step as he bolted down the alley, hoping that there would be an exit on the other side. Running quickly, he powered through the twist and turn of the buildings, as it didn't he seemed to lead him to the other side of Ichiraku's, more like the middle of the building surrounding him. That was proven true as he turned the corner, coming into an interesting sight as a small park came into view. Well, one might not call it a park, it literally consisted of a circle of stone perimeter that was a little elevated from the ground as a large sakura tree grew from the middle, with grass filling in the area. Benches were lined along the elevated stone and against the buildings of what Naruto thought to be a smoking zone. Looking around, he realized that there were no openings and the way he came from was the only entrance and exit. The fierce shiver shot up his spine as his torso clenched up, a foot falling onto the smooth stone. Plack. Whipping around, Naruto noticed the proximity of his face and Naomi S, who had her hands clasped and had an amorous look directed to him. Naruto quickly walked backwards, his back hitting the base of the tree as Naomi retained the distance, their bodies mere centimeters away. The furry fox cackled maniacally at the turn of events and continued to get to work. And now Naomi, let SN not get hasty right in now. Naruto started to panic, his arms extended trying to push her away before she slapped the downwards, shooting both of her arms out as her hands landed besides Naruto's head. Or rather, into the tree as she enhanced her hands with chakra as her hands were now embedded into the wood. Ani Sama Naomi said, a touch of seductive undertone could be heard as she leaned close. Shit. Not a guy mmmmmph. Naruto was silenced as Naomi's lips met his for a second time. It started off quick and sloppy, before she readjusted herself and skillfully sucked his face, for lack of a better term. Should any bystander see, one might remark that they look like two lovebirds who confess their undying love to each other. Naruto could do nothing but be at his little sister's mercy, as his mouth was agape when she kissed him. Bad move. Naomi, as she basically cleaned his tonsils, sucked on his lips before diving into his mouth with her tongue, wrestling with his. She had pulled her hands out of the tree as she wrapped Naruto into a hug, deepening the kiss. Naruto could feel her budding, yet still very present press against his chest, and he found it highly disturbing that he was secretly enjoying it. Try as he might, he cold and tear resist as a small trickle of blood flowed from his nose, onto his lips. Naomi got a little dicey, not thinking at the right frame of mind, as she let the blood from his nose slip into their kiss, as she lapped up Naruto's saliva and blood, enjoying the coppery taste. The worst part of this was that Naomi's eyes bore into his cerulean ones, and if he could properly make out, hearts were just faintly visible in her eyes. Naruto's body went slack as his legs gave out, his body sliding off the tree and onto the grass. Naomi with the grip of a professional wrestler, didn't he let up at all as she fell with him, gravity working in her favor as she practically had coiled her tongue with Naruto's. He was too lost in forbidden bliss as his eyes rolled to the back of his head. Naomi, who was now laying on top of Naruto, unclasped the hug and moved up to his neck while she brought up one leg near her chest, her crotch on top of his as she unknowingly grinded into it. Naruto unconsciously moaned into the kiss, sending sparks into her loins that made her a little warm between the legs. 
After a minute, Naruto came back to life as he felt the something soft and warm on top of him to snap back to the kiss. Another few minutes passed before Naomi had her fill and stopped her movements, going back to simple kissing as a large strand of saliva connected their mouths. Hungrily, she used her hand to cut the strand and wrap it around her finger before sticking it in her mouth, savoring the taste. But the pop, she pulled the finger out as she straddled him, Naruto's mind going blank. Juan Naruto whimpered in a low voice before Naomi's other hand shushed Naruto. Kissing him on the cheek, she whispered into his ear. I love you, Ani-sama. I am sorry for everything, but I love you. I love you more than the world, more than Kachan and Tuchan, and more than me. She said, nibbling his ear as she nuzzled his neck. Naruto could do nothing but stare with an apathetic expression, being too tired for this shit and gave up. Sighing, he ran his fingers along her long hair, making her purr before she planted kisses on his neck and jaw, kissing his lips again before pulling away. She smiled, which Naruto thought was cute as she lovingly spoke the words with a ton of conviction behind them. I love you, Naruto. And in a dash, she got off of him and ran out of the area, leaving him alone to his thoughts. Shit. In his mindscape, a small orange orb made herself known as it floated wispy-like as it found the older, sleeping Naruto. It laid next to him on the heart-shaped bed before glowing brightly, taking the form of Naomi as she curled and snuggled into Naruto's arm. As if in a dreamlike state, the older Naruto turned his body and brought her closer into his, her head buried into his chest and his own into her flowing orange hair. His blonde locks and her orange ones made it look like the sun had given birth to two children, as a breeze brushed by and danced across their skin. The Gaia, who was busy at the moment had returned to find her spot taken by Naomi and pouted, before smiling at Tad and pulling out a clipboard. On it was a piece of paper with various names on it with a box next to it. Her name was on it too, with a check mark in the box. Looking down, she found Naomi's name before checking it off. Param member number one, get. She said, before throwing the clipboard into a portal. Amic. It was time for bed for little Naruto, the day had been long and boring with nothing to do. It was 8pm as Naruto finished a painting of his family, before splashing his name on the back and setting it firmly on a wall with a seal. Eyeing the piece, he nodded, before putting his crayons away. Yawning, Naruto clambered into bed and put the covers over his body, slowly falling into the abyss of dreams. As he was falling into dreamland, a gust of wind blew past his window before a small clank hit the shingles. On the outside of the Namika's compound, a hunched, distorted figure leaned against the wall as it creaked closer to the window. Using its toes, the figure flexibly put one leg on either side of the window frame before crouching in a half stance, its hands going to the base. With little effort, the figure lifted the bottom half of the window before doing a few hand seals. The figure's hand glue a light blue as it thrust it into the window, a small shattering sound coming from the outside. It had just broken the only barrier between the mystery figure and Naruto, who had turned around in his sleep to face away from the window. Quickly, the figure swung in and landed softly with a hand stretched on the floor, balancing on its toes. Whipping around, it quickly shut the window before standing fully erect. But the clap of the figure's hands and a silent mumble, the once invisible figure changed into one of color. Shapely legs, a round rear and sizable chest revealed Aika garbed in stereotypical ninja gear, dressed in black. Her fiery red mane was dulled by the moonlight as she undressed and sealed her clothing into a seal tattoo on her arm. She was now dressed in lingerie, black lacy bra and matching panties, only enhanced her features, not to mention her tanned skin, made her look like an Amazon goddess. Walking on the balls of her feet, she made her way to the prone Naruto and with a quick action, slid into the bed with Naruto. She sighed in content as she became the big spoon, Naruto the little spoon. Despite the lack of space, she was happy, spending time with the love of her life. The thoughts that paraded through her mind was too much for her to handle, as her mind conjured an image of her, the 20-year-old Anbu and an 8-year-old Naruto, running through a field of flowers in slow motion, before both of them fell on their sides. The Ika and the Dream was laying on her side, with her arm propping her head, as the same could be said about Naruto. She got bold and leaned in, her lips tantalizingly close to claiming her love's first kiss, before she was violently ejected from her dream, blood dripping down her nose. Banishing the thoughts, she snuggled into Naruto and was about to sleep in peace, before she heard a rattling. She turned her head and saw a figure come from the same window she did, before she undressed as well and stepped into the light. The sight, quite frankly, pissed her off. The wild Kumiko had appeared. As she was dressed in blue lingerie, matching her blue hair, and stealthily walked towards the bed before she was kicked away and pressed against the wall by Aika, a look of pure fury adorning her beautiful features. Not wanting to wake Naruto, she used her Anbu hand codes to communicate. What the hell are you doing here, Kumiko? Kumiko smiled before using her hands. I came to sleep with Nerichan. He was just too adorable to leave alone. 
she smiled a toothy grin, which made Aika ease up a little as she had to agree. His cuteness was too overwhelming for the two. Aika nodded slowly, before relaxing her grip and making hand codes. Alright, fine, you can sleep with me and Naruto, but you better make the bed bigger, this twin-size mattress isn't gonna support the three of us. Nodding, Kumiko made hand seals before touching the ground with her fingers and started to trace the air. In a matter of seconds, Kumiko, using her draw release. Skillful tracing, had set the shape of the bed and made it bigger, while channeling her Doton affinity as exchange. Now that the bed frame was twice as large, she unsealed a queen-sized mattress and placed it down. The reason why she had a queen-sized mattress was because she found distaste in sleeping bags, so she carried a comfy mattress for overnight missions. Using her drawer release again, she connected the twin and queen-sized mattress, and it fused into one large mattress, and the two shifted Naruto in the middle, Aika and Kumiko, claiming his arms as pillows and side in content. As they were about to sleep, the two heard a noise and sat up, prepared as two beings shifted from the shadows outside and seeped inside the room. The shadows grew until they were banished away, revealing Yuigao and Anko, wearing purple and red lingerie respectively. Aika growled a quiet yet menacingly, getting their attention as their eyes were wide. The two were about to talk before Kumiko used Anbu hand codes to tell them to be quiet, Naruto was sleeping. Eventually, the quartet were facing each other, as if in a standoff. Why are you two here now? I could make do with just Kumiko, but you two made it all the more difficult. Aika signed. Hey. Don't you be yelling at us like that. Anko signed aggressively. Last time I checked, Naruto belongs to all Anbu, not exclusively to you, you hothead. Yuga retorted, making Aika angrier. Kumiko tried to be the voice of reason, trying to calm her down, but the three weren't paying attention, so she tried harder. In the end, the four were violently using Anbu hand codes to throw insults at each other. It looked like four people in a dance off to see which one was the better dancer, before they heard the bed squeak from strain. Naruto was twisting and turning, as the blanket had been directed to the floor and was about to get up before the four jumped. Aika and Kumiko claimed Naruto's small arms, while Yugao and Anko claimed his legs, and the fighting stopped as Naruto relaxed and went to sleep. That could be credited to the fact that his limbs were firmly secure in four different sets of, but I digress. The four made eye contact before nodding once and drifted to sleep with their living teddy bear. Meanwhile, Asaki was crying waterfalls as she was stuck at home, acting as the secretary for Anbu Commander Dragon, who was hiding behind her chair, rubbing a gloved hand over a picture frame of Naruto smiling toothily. She hugged the picture frame to her chest, and Asaki could swore she heard an audible squee.